Mega barada bakana la sone lendo se baraba baba baba ba ragabana sana makamo agabara makana na sana la mai menda da da la da ba da da ba da ba la da ba la ba la da ba da ba la da ba la ka ela como uma sila nesta le como de le ba 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 ra ga ba 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 ra mente solo bela kana makona na de mate ela mana ma aso sela mana mana ma la sone ke ba bonda sala mente mente kana na aze mente de 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 bele ko ko ba 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 ra ba 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 Asana komena sana nama 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 Asana mana nala dabara nama 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 Gaba ba 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 Yena la kana na la kana na la kana ela na kana ela na kana le da bana sana la kana le da prondo ko baba barada baba baba rati le da bana sana makana le baba na masana makana makana le baba barana kana la kamila le da sana mini me da baba barada bana makana mataya Eko kapiana sana mande kile bele nendia aga ba 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 raka mana kane le mande akamia salanda kama na te le ba ba na kananda kame aga ba 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 Asana makama makama na kana mana sane ega ba 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 rada makane the channel of my spirit open the channel of my spirit break open nena kana na tana nayo the channel of my spirit break open nena kana sana makane ega ba rada na taya menda kapa rada ba kama mai le ma 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 kai le ma 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 kai le ba sana ma kana la mai e de bere de be de be de be de ba ma kai ba ba pa 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 ra ka pa 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 ya le na kana sana le no ke e ga ba na sana ma kana me de de la de be la de be la be na ba la ba la ba la de Menda sele bele kone le barode le de boro dobo komo koma kobo koma kobo koma ega manda sana makane le bone ega da barada baba gala bala da bala bala da basha men de de la de bele bele de bele de bele 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 ta bela sana makana makama mamana te Let the bell, let the bell, the bell, let 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 the bell, Menda sana la koma na sana makelia gaba raba baba baba raba pama maka rada baba 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 makama makaba raba dabalate lenda belenda bela 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 men sala men kuteli magana tani eza sana makoma mama makani asha daba baba baba bara na kama manata Le boro do komo komo no no mo do bolo do bolo bolo do bolo do bolo te. Man de keme na sana makaila boro ke ba 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 ba
Shaka kaka kaka leka kaka kaya leka kaka kaya leka kaka kaya lada baba 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 rada baba rada baba rada baba baba lada baba baba lada Ega na da kana gana gana kana gada gana ashana makama na manate elegana sana makane legia lakabala bala barada bakaya menda sana la makome na saile ega brodo koma mama 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 nate lende sele gebele debele 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 mande mene 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 Ana makana makama na mana 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 we fly that flag of the eagle we mount up with wings like that of a eagle ne kamanda sana makana we mount up with wings like that of a eagle ne kamanda sana makaya le baba 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 regele debele bele bele ta manda sana makana makande ege debele bele ta menda sana makele Mende sele barada baba barada bakaya Lemo do come na siva nata nende kabana kande akama mama da kama mama ashanela come na te eka baba baba ba raba baba ba rada baba ba rana kana na kana lana bele tene ne koma na sande Libaranda come and celebrate Papa 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 Reggae baba 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 Raga daga la daga la daba la daba Raga pane kene Indiana tane Lebaratane 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 Aka papa pe Lende peli anateli anata Menda sana makane leba Reba paliana senya Konde semi na koma Koma na koma na ko Ekina sana makie Lende bono kone mai Ah, na makela mana sai aga bara kama ka le bara na kane ega piana sana mi ale koma sane le bai ne kene nene le le bara baba baba bala 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 shana kana na mana tai men de de bala de bala 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 Shada bara baba 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 baba. Ashana mana makana mana mana mai. Shukurene <laughs> Mendi solo mondo koma mela kane la kaba Rada bakale la bono sone me Leke leke berekana mahazo Bele koba baba berekane leke Londa bara kama mama makaba baba Raka makama makama mama 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 Aya kaba baba baba sana makane Eleboro kona sana makane labaya 
Kamene Kela Barana Kabana Kane Ega Bakane Ela Bakane Lumbara Baba 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 Kane Menda Shana Kamana Kedebaya
just as the Lord.
the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. It's a prayer. Pray in the spirit. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up as eagles. They will run and not be weary. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. You will run and not get tired. Seal it with prayer. Seal it with prayer. Seal it with prayer. He lost Shabbat. Pray in tongues. All over the room, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. All over the room. Pray in the Spirit. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He has anointed you. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. As many are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So, son, pray. Daughter, pray. Son, pray. Daughter, pray. Son, pray. Daughter, pray. to express yourself with the Holy Ghost the hand of God is upon your life Yakona sabale kurapatosa labraka papa namasataya the hand of the Lord is upon you is upon you babe la kapape rakoto sebra la takambahata yakamba sapreta le prato kamela sate the hand of God is upon my life. Aloka sabane meleka kamba mo. Abela akonto sopa rekato mebaya lepreketa lejata. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Is upon you. Rakabane rababasa katamo. The hand of the Lord is upon you. La bella kata balebaka polia. Make most use of this moment. Baleke la basataye. La babena katango. Rako sopra la malatakapa. The hand of the Lord is upon you. You cannot be ordinary. You cannot be ordinary. Kabela basabano, kalabasame la piantomi. Reach out in this moment. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Kola base prana taka poli, raba bene saka bantaba, brake koso, brake koso, braka kapa bale, raka pa pa pa, rakoto sopra lata, rake babena, 
Ale, Ale, Yaka, 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 Yako Bobo, Rapa Babe Kato, Rapa Baskapa, Rapa Baskapa, Rekato Sobrate, Rapa, Rapa. The hand of the Lord is upon me. La bay la kabe basataba. I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. The rabbi le kepanda lata. Sabrato me le kata balakapa. Rababale, 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 rakopanda pala. Daria kabe. I cannot be ordinary. The hand of the Lord is upon me. Gabale masabe la babe. Lord, on to this moment. La bella catamba hatata. La prata come saprata bayata. You must not live this earth this way. Your life must show that you are what supernatural. That you are not ordinary. The hand of God is upon me. I am for exploits. La Bella Catababa. I am for signs and wonders. La Bella Cabo. Cabebele. Rababa Sakaba. I cannot be ordinary. The hand of the Lord is upon me. La bella kaya na masabalo, rabema, rabema, rabemo koto, rababo sopa, rekato melekeba. Babe, babe, rapa babe, rapa bakoto, reketa baba, raka, raka, rakobo, rapa baseka ba, rapa batoka ba, babe, babe. They will touch you this afternoon. They will touch you this afternoon. Your angels, your angels, that you are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. Baleke ya bada bata kapala. La preke toma. La pamela, la pamela. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are not ordinary. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Lomia la kapale rakata bashata rababa komalata kapa. La baba la kata zaba. The touch of God. La bella bala come la toga. Cabele bosho melata. Every mindset that is against the will of the Lord for your life will begin to cast them down. 
you are not ordinary you are not ordinary you are not ordinary you are not ordinary la bella con della sapato rababena 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 rababe kotoma rababa kotoma kato rababa no comia la capala rabea lo comia satan Brother, you are not honored. Brother, you are not honored. Sister, you are not honored. La bella mocotto soba Babela babela Babelo coma Rababa satama Rababa mocotto pol Rababa da capa Rababa conto poco Rababa de malacata Rabia rabia copia pa Awa olua Un bello rimio Oh, baby, for oh, baby, sorry. Oh, oh, Lua, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, sorry. Oh, oh, Lua, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, sorry. You do not walk alone. You do not stand alone. The hand of the Lord is upon you.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for how you have shown us mercy since last night. Thank you because again this afternoon you will teach us. You will instruct us in the name of Jesus. Thank you because now are we also sons of God the Lord we trust you that you will help us in the name of Jesus thank you Father for in Jesus name we are prayed hallelujah alright <clears throat> please manage my I'm saying they need to be patient and build this thought up and remind us of things that we have known before. <clears throat> and then in the next session we can begin to move up. <sighs> All right. We had seen in the previous session how Jesus is the unique Son of God. Are you following me, please? We're able to see how Jesus is the unique Son of God. Now, in this session, I want to try and let us see how we were declared sons of God and God's plan with us, God's mandate for us. Hallelujah. I trust God to help me to touch many things in a very brief moment. Glory to God. So we'll have this session now, you know, till about four or five thereabout. Then we'll go for another break and have another session. All right. So how will we declare sons of God? I already told us yesterday that it was by adoption and by birth. Glory to God. And so we're going to look at scriptures to see how that was possible. How was that possible? All right. I want us to start from John 1. John 1. Mm. No, let's start from Ephesians chapter 2, sorry. Ephesians chapter 2. Apologies, we'll come back to John chapter 1. We saw that Jesus died and resurrected from the dead. The scripture said that he was declared to be the Son of God according to the spirit of holiness. By what? By the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. So by the reason of his resurrection, he was proven to be the Son of God. Then we went further to share that when he rose from the dead, he ascended. And that when he ascended, there were certain things that the Father said unto him that made us to see that he was exalted above angels. Again, I'm trying to say, and that he had more excellent name than they. Glory to God. 
So we saw also how he was elevated above angels in Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 2 talks about how he was elevated above Moses. But this is what I want to drive at. You see, when Jesus was dying on the cross and he resurrected, his death on the cross was necessary for our redemption. Are you listening to me? Jesus had no business with death, if not for us. Are you getting me? Because death has no power over him. And that's why he himself said in the book of John that I take, I lay down my life to do what? To take it again. He said, no one can take my life from me. Are you listening to me? So he had power over death even before he went to the cross. Jesus had power over death. Are you following me? But you see, the reason why Jesus had to taste of death is because without tasting of death, sons of men cannot be made sons of God. Are you listening? So in Hebrews chapter 2, he talked up, I think, verse, he talked about how he behoved him to taste of death by grace for every man. Because the reason for Jesus dying was not concerning him, it was for me and you. Glory to God. So you see, God actually included us in Christ Jesus. And that's the word I'm going to use. Because you see, in the purchase of redemption, it wasn't just only substitution that was at work. There was also the law of inclusion. Are you listening to me? Oftentimes, the Old Testament showed us that it was more of an, a substitutionary sacrifice. The priest who confess all his sins on the end of the lamb. You remember? But you see, God also had another law that he began to reveal by the mouth of Paul. That not only did Christ take our place, we were actually together with Christ. Are you getting this? We were actually together with Christ. So that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, God takes it that the color day in Adam died. Are you following me? So, to God, who you were has died. Are you getting me? That was what he sought to achieve in the redemptive work of Christ that he included us in it. Now, the life me and you have right now is actually a product of the resurrection of Jesus. When you say you are born again, you are saying, I'm connected to the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. That the life now that is at work in me is the life that rose him from the dead. Glory to God. So, a believer is a product of resurrection. His life right now is actually that which came in resurrection. Hallelujah. The life that we have now is actually that which came in resurrection. So when people are saying, ah, are you sure that Jesus rose from the dead? We are the evidence. By the new life now that we are living in Christ Jesus. Are you following me? So that's why when you say somebody gets born again, is that he has actually plugged into a life that was never available before. That became available by resurrection. By resurrection. So how were we declared to be sons of God? By the finish included us in the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. He counted us as though as Jesus went through those things, you also went through it. So I don't have to die now. Do you get that? I have... Hope of eternal life now. Why? Because Jesus died and I was included in that death. Glory to God. So God has included us in the death, burial, 
resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. You are included. That was all what Paul labored to talk about in Ephesians chapter 2. Are you there already? Because I'm trying to give you a background. In Ephesians chapter 2, he began and said, And you are the what? Quickened. Abby? Who were sometimes what? Dead in trespasses and sins. Some versions use buried. Are you following me? Are you with me? Yes. All right. Let's just remind ourselves of that as we push. My teaching in this session is to let us see that even after I've been declared sons, there is a walk that we are to walk so that we can manifest our sons. Because you see, the next expectation of the creature is not waiting for the confession of sons. What is he waiting for? For the manifestation. It's the manifestation. So, God is looking at people that really wants to manifest sonship. That's the aim of this session. We want to show that God is alive in our vessel. My God. Oh my God. That God is alive in me and in you. Are you getting? That, that's the aim. And there is a journey that a believer must take to ensure that God is made manifest in his vessel. Are you listening to me? Yes. All of us are called to manifest God. Not a pastor. Not an evangelist. All of us. In fact, a son is a reflection of a father. Are you listening to me? It's an extension of a father. That's when many of us were living on, they say, run to your mind, you. Because your family is trying to remind you that you, see, you are a representative of a place, of a clan. Are you listening to me? And that's what God is open through our lives, that as we journey in the path of life, it will be clear that we are not of this world. Are you listening to me? Because, you see, there is a you that ought to come out from you. Because the you that we are facing in this world is the color day of Oyedin. But God is trusting that as you walk with him, they will see a color day of God. Hi. That was why the same person that was Saul was not the same person that was Paul. It's clear that even though Saul had the encounter, Paul came out. Oh. Paul came out. The annexed expectation of the creation waited for what? The manifestation of the sons of God. So, I will, I will let us follow this thing line by line. And I have, I have desires. Do you know how many families are here right now? Potential families. Many of you will get married. That as parents will be the first sons of God that our children will know. Hallelujah. When they are saying, where is God? They can look at their daddy. They can look at their mom. And say, ma, I knew God through you. By your life. Let's go line upon line. So he says, and you are the quickened who were dead in what? In trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past he walked according to what? To the course of this world. You see, and people don't know that this world has a course. Have you seen how the waves of an ocean move? This world has a wave. I tell people, if you don't know your destiny, this world already has a destiny for you. There is a course of this world. There is a programming already that Satan has put in place that if you not see God, there is something you will still fulfill. The only thing that you will fulfill is that it will not be found in God's script. Because you see, this world has what? A course. 
there is a way this world moves that if you do not know God for yourself and you are not led by the Spirit of God, it will move you after its course. Are you following me? You see, when your life is not going after the course of this world, then you are hearing it. Because what many of us do is what is trendy, not what is shown you. Are you listening to me? There is the cause of this world. You see, we, those times, in time past, we walked according to what? The cause of this world, according to what? The prince of the power of where? So, obviously, the cause of this world is actually projected and programmed by who? The prince of the power of the air. There is already a programming in the world that Satan has made for how things to be. But thank God that there are sons that will break the course. In the name of Jesus. Let's jump to verse 4. But God, who is rich in what? You know, the rich men on the earth, they are rich in currencies. Hallelujah. Rich in naira, rich in dollars. Rich in pounds, rich in euros. But our God is rich in what? So when God spends, what does he spend? Spends mercy. They are new every morning. Hallelujah. God spends mercy. Just, just says mercy today. Mercy. They are new every morning. You see? He said God who is rich in mercy. What did he do? Verse 5, even when we were what? So you see, it was his mercy that brought grace. Are you listening to me? Mercy was what brought what? So, it says, But God was rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with who? By grace ye are saved. Now, you see, he didn't stop there. Quickened means to give life. Are you listening to me? So he's saying when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that means when life entered to his body, we also were a partaker of that life. Are you listening to me? Now, in the next verse, it says, what did he do again? Raised us up together. So not only did he quicken Christ and us, he raised us up what? together. So when Christ resurrected 2,000 years ago, in God's heart, you had resurrected. Hello. You had resurrected. And what it means is that it's by faith now that you plug it into it now. So, he says, he has raised us up together. So, not only did he raise us up together, what did he do again? He made us, what, sit together, quickened us together, raised us together, then made us, what, sit together. So, right now, where are you seated? With Christ. Where? Where? in heavenly places. Glory to God. And you see, to let you know that this was not fake, eh? to show us that it was not fake, God had to send the born-again spirit of Christ into us. Hallelujah. He said in Galatians, Galatians chapter 4. From verse 5 to 7. I need somebody with an evangelistic voice. Because you see, God was trying to show us that something has taken place. And the evidence thereof is by giving you a born again spirit. And that spirit, actually the spirit of the Son or the spirit of Christ. Are you listening to me? So the spirit the believer has, eh? is from the life-giving spirit. Is that spirit of Christ that rose from where? From the dead. 
Glory to God. <laughs> Some of you didn't hear what I said. Let's read Galatians chapter 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we might receive the adoption of sons, yes. And because you are sons, because God has accepted us as sons, yes. What did he send? The spirit of the son into where? Crying, Abba, Father. Glory to God. So, as a result of our faith in the finished works of Christ, God sent forth what? The spirit of his son. Where? Into our hearts. The spirit of the son here is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That was called the promise of the Father. Did you get what I'm saying? But he's telling us that, you see, we receive the spirit. It's a born-again spirit. The spirit of who? The son. That is what some scriptures also call the new man. So your spirit right now is the spirit of who? Of the son. Glory to God. Romans 8, to buttress this further. We have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Romans 8, verse 15. We are going somewhere. Mm -hmm. The spirit of adoption. The spirit that makes us sons. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. There is no religion on the face of the earth that considered God as their father, as their biological father. Hello? But you see, it was Jesus that has given us the privilege for us to be able to call God what? And what has empowered us to be able to stand before God without any iota of guilt? It's because the spirit of the son dwells where? In us. That's what actually righteousness means. To stand before God without any form of inferiority or what? Or guilt. And what has made that possible? The spirit of the son. The born again spirit. Hallelujah. Say the born again spirit in me has given me confidence. To see God as my father. You see, a Muslim cannot have this confidence. He can only fake it. Are you listening to me? Because what has empowered us to be able to say this and to believe this and to know this is because the spirit of the son is where? You see, the spirit of the son is also what we call the indwelling Christ. Hello. Those are analogies in scriptures. So, me and you, by the reason of the receiving of the spirit of the son, or the spirit of adoption, or the spirit of Christ, we have been what? Adopted into God's family. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I've been adopted. So right now, I belong to a heavenly family. A family that does not lack. My relatives are spirits of just men made perfect. My relatives are heavenly beings because we belong to the same family. And that's why I tell us that that born again spirit is a holy spirit. There is no other kind of that spirit. It's the spirit of the son, and there's only one son. Glory to God. That's why a demon cannot possess you. 
Because the spirit of the son is on your inside. Are you listening to me? Those days that they used to scare us in church. You know all those prophets that come for revival? Oh, it doesn't happen in your church. It doesn't happen. All those prophets. Pastor, if it allows say, so Jean, me just see. So you two, where are they Lord, help me. Some of you know that you have difficulty closing high. <laughs> It's because you do not know that the spirit you have now is the spirit of the Son. A Holy Spirit that nothing else other than God can dwell in. Hallelujah. I once said the story of Babylon. I think I must have said it before. Wanted to cast out the demon. And the demon said, Babylon, Shanu me, Shanu me, he will be king, Lobai. And he, oh, Lord, I'm not going to be like him. I'm not going to be. He pointed to me and the demon shouted. You can you cast out the demon and tell him maybe you can enter here. <laughs> the demon shouted because he knew that ah Baba Maja and Wobe. Hello. You see, when you know the devil will be small, ah, the victory of Jesus is too much for the devil to intimidate us. Are you listening to me? The what has been installed in your spirit. Colossians 3.10 tells us that our spirit is renewed in the image of him. Hello? Oh, you're not here hearing me. You're still warming up. The new born again spirit is the spirit of the son. We are a new creation. Because now we are a product of resurrection. Where is resurrection? It's inside of me. Why? Because he that is life and resurrection is here. Hallelujah. You see? So that God wants to prove to you that when you believe in the finished works of Christ, I acknowledge it. So he gave you a born again spirit. The spirit of the son. That imparted you with confidence to be able to look at God and call him father. So right now, because of this spirit, you have access always. Hello? Can I blast your mind? Even when you just finish lying, you still have access. Hey! But you see, lying is not the way of the children of God. But I'm even saying that even if it happens to you, that you lied, you still have access to come back and say, God, have mercy. Hello? The spirit of the son is inside of me. And you see, to prove to us that now we are begotten of the father. Are you listening to me? Jesus also declared in scriptures. He says, I, am, I will declare thy name in the congregation. Hebrews chapter 2. Please follow me. See, righteousness eh, is not just imputed. Eh, it's also a reality within you. Are you getting it? And that's why I tell people there are two kinds of righteousness. Righteousness upon and righteousness within. The righteousness within is
church there. The assembly of the sons of God. Are you listening to me? The assembly of the sons of God. In the congregation of the sons of God, I will sing your name. Jesus is proud about the fact that you have come to believe in what he has done for you. Glory to God. So don't be ashamed. It is not a boast to say, I am a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Because he himself is not ashamed to call you what? Brethren. Hallelujah. So I'm a brother of Jesus. I'm a sister of Jesus. It's not heresy. It's the truth of God's word. Because he himself is not ashamed to call us that. Are you getting? He's not ashamed. You see, this is righteousness. He's standing before God without shame. He's walking without shame. He said, ah, I don't know my brother. I don't know my, 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 my sisters. You already have one. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm a product of a child born out of wedlock. Can I tell you, have you placed your faith in Jesus Christ? Now you have a father. Oh, I don't have any brother or sister. Now Jesus says, I've called you what? My brother. This is awesome. And now did we plug into this just by faith in his finished works? We have become part of the heavenly family. Oh my. Part of the heavenly family. Part of the heavenly family. Just by simple faith. Hallelujah. Now I need to let you understand. The spirit that we receive now as a result of being born again, does not know sin. Doesn't have the ability to sin. Are you following me? And God has placed that spirit in us. It's not just so that the spirit is there to just, to just be there. It's to achieve something in God. Glory to God. All right. So let, let's move on. Let's move on. So let's go back to that John 1 that we wanted to start with. So we have seen that God included us in the redemptive work of Christ, Abby. And in that inclusion, as we placed our faith in response, he sent forth what? The spirit of his son. Glory to God. And the spirit of the son has imparted us with confidence to be able to call God Father. Hallelujah. Now, John began to also make us see that you see, we have actually been born again. We have actually been born of God. Because John, chapter 1, verses 12, are we there? As we are about to advance. <clears throat> Let's start from verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, he gave them power to become what? Sons of God. Glory to God. Now, power in this context is exousia, right, authority, to become what? Sons of God. So you must understand. Right to become. Right to become. Right to become. Your matriculation number is a right to become what? A doctor. A student that is to become a doctor. Abi? For those of you in other courses, your matriculation number was that right for you to become that thing in that course you entered for. So, we know that you are a doctor to happen. And that's why some people, once you cross over to you, see, people start calling you doctor. Am I correct? I don't know if it's still the same, but I guess it should be. 
But the truth is, John is making us see that we are sons of God and we are still going to become sons of God. Amen. Because this session I said I want to teach about manifestation. Follow me. It says, right to become what? Sons of God. Even to them that do what? So do you believe on his name? So he has given you a right. 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 It says again in verse 13, what was that right? That right was provided for us by birth. Which were born. That's what the next verse tells us. Yes, my brother. Which were born not of blood, mm-hmm. not of the will of the flesh, mm-hmm. not of the will of man, mm-hmm. but of God. Hallelujah. So the fact that we have been born of God has given us the right to become what? Sons of God. It has given us the right to become sons of God. And you see, a son of God right now, positionally, you are higher than the devil. Because when he raised up Christ together to sit in heavenly places, it was far above what? Principalities and powers. The scripture tells us that. So that means the person that gets born again today has more authority than the devil. But you see, the only way it can be limited is by ignorance. That's why Paul says we are not ignorant of the devices of what? Of Satan. Can I tell you, the device of Satan is ignorance. Did you get what I said? That the device of what? Of Satan is what? Is ignorance. He loves the fact that you are ignorant. That you are an ignoramus. That way, he can have a few day with you. That's why Satan will fight you from getting light. That's why we need to labor in prayers so that we can teach these things plainly. Why? Because Satan don't want people to hear it. They tell you, you have to be strong first in the spirit. But the truth is, he said that by position, we have been raised what far above principalities and what and powers. Glory to God. And far above is not just above; it's far above. We are so high. We are so high. Now let's move on. So by the reason of our birth, we have right to become sons of God. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called what? The sons of God. So we are called sons of God because we are to become what? Sons of God. Because you must understand that one speaks about a legal premise. Are you following me? A legal premise. The other speaks about an experiential one. Are you following me? So God, first of all, made you that so that you can become it. Did you get what I'm saying? Now, do you know that a mango tree is, first of all, inside where? The seed. So as I'm holding a seed, am I holding a mango tree? Some of you shook your head. What I'm holding is the potential. Are you following? It's the potential for what? For a mango tree. So it would be stupid for me to call a mango seed a mango tree. But the truth is, once we put that into the ground and then we cultivate it, what will we get? So it's clear that if me and you can walk with God by the reason of the life that we have now. What God will reap from our lives is actually what? So he first of all puts the potential. Are you getting it? So that truly we can do what? We can become. 
Are you following me? You see, we, we, we must be truthful with ourselves. Sons of God is not something small. It's not play play we are talking about here. We are looking for people who really want to journey. Who want to journey. So, our birth is our potential to become what? Sons of God. So in every person that receives Christ by faith, hears the gospel, and receives the gospel by faith, he has a potential to become what? Son of God. But he is also what? A son of God. You do get that? So let's move forward. And that's why when you look at the parables of Jesus, when he spoke about the kingdom, he would refer to the kingdom like a seed. Have you, have you seen that before? He would refer to the kingdom like living. He told them the kingdom does not come with observation. Abi? It does not come with observation. But lo, the kingdom is where? Within you. He was telling us that the kingdom was going to come within that life of God. But you see, when it comes, it's not going to come with observation. It's not going to be boisterous. But a time it will be manifested. Maliko <laughs> Zainakata. That is, that is what we want to seek in this session. That we want to walk with God so much that it can be manifested through us. Hallelujah. So let's go line by line. I need to read one more scripture to show you that this is God's intention when he sent forth his spirit into our hearts. His spirit into our hearts is to culture and cultivate a son of God out. So that now a son will actually be one that God has been manifested through. I don't remember how many of us has ever happened to that you were told that, ah, you are truly the son of your father. Why did that person say that? They saw a trait of your dad. Where? Are you following? So what made that person say you are truly is because they could see the same kind of dimension that was in your father also where? You see, until he's seen in us, we can't be satisfied. You see, that is the journey of this Christian faith. We are not just getting saved so that we can catch the next balloon to heaven. We actually got saved so that this God can be seen through us. Are you, are you listening? That's why that your Lord Sunday song is valid. Until my holy gaze is you. Spirit keep brooding over me until I know. Are you listening to me? Until my holy love is you. Spirit keep brooding You see, the thing is that God wants us to be in charge. Are you listening to me? And that's why me and you must grow so that we can truly be in charge. Grow is a must for a Christian. It's not an option. You are not called to be a, one, a, a bench warmer. A one that knows how to sing choruses but cannot travel in the heavenly realm. Are you listening to me? Me ori ori Hello, you only are Let me continue because this evening I want my friend to have time to teach us on something because our sons were called to be custodians. But let me focus on this part of this application. Listen to me. Jesus likened it to living to a seed. You get what I'm trying to say? And that suddenly 
grows to become the greatest amongst all what? All trees. That was the most stars. Imagine that great tree is inside what? A seed. God right now has placed that potential in us for us to be able to what? Manifest it. My spirit right now has the capacity to reflect God. And that's why the Bible says that your spirit is made in the image of you. Are you listening to me? But you see, we must journey till it gets bigger and bigger. It's the expression, gets bigger and bigger. Now you will know that this was where I was before. Now I am here. Why? Because Christ has been magnified in me. So let me show you that scripture I said he was going to show us his intention. Why he has sent his spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So that now me and you look at this. This path. This journey of spiritual development and manifestation. So 2 Corinthians 6. My God, he has some land to me. Gratonia Stabranta, Le Econo, Sabranta Babe, Cabaranto, Sola, Sola, Pati, Bane, Mati, Conda, Askibata. Look at what Second Corinthians 6 has to say. From verse 14. He said, Be ye not what? Unequally yoked, together with what? For what fellowship add what? What communion add what? Let's jump to verse 16. It says, What agreement at what? If you look at what it was just comparing the two sides. Go ahead. For you are what? You are what? Yes. Now, you will see that in this point, Paul is quoting scripture. <coughs> As God had said, what did he say? I will dwell in them, and what will I do also? And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 17, wherefore, come out from among them, and be you what? And touch not worth. And now we what? Verse 18. So what is he telling us? God doesn't only want to dwell in us. He wants to walk. Hello? You see, the word dwell is a word of rest. Are you getting He's talking about the residing presence of God in us by his spirit. But now on this scripture is telling us that, that God doesn't only want to dwell. What does he want to do? He wants to walk. That walk there is actually manifestation. How will God walk in us? It's not W-O-R-K. What does he say? W-A-L-K. God wants to walk in God. God wants to walk in about being made manifest. God wants to be seen through my person. And because of this, God's idea and agenda is calling me and you to be separate. Are you following me? So that means it's clear that God cannot fulfill his agenda of being manifested through us. Thereby we manifest in our sons of God. If we do not walk in what? In separation from the world. You think what I'm saying? Because this is the scriptures. He said, wherefore? Wherefore means therefore. For this reason. The injunction for holiness is because of God's agenda. And what's that agenda? He wants to be seen to our best. He wants to walk towards that when they touch you, they can touch you and so that through literally my hands will be his hands. Are you following me? That's 
the plan of God. That's the plan of God. He has an agenda. So the reason why his spirit is with you is not to get you raptured first. We have already learned that when the earth is out of course, why are they out of course? Because sons of God are still. Are you listening? Are you my dear Lord God in sons of Christ? So no, you just don't talk to that God in the world. When you are living, God is not here. But you see, this knowledge, this mentality has to change. We should know that we are coming to church so that more and more we can begin to grab more of His life. So that we can pursue him, or that we are waiting on John, one way or the other. You now you can just scale and enter heaven by chance. By chance. And now you're going to do so. It's by chance. See, I don't know what the must not be doing what you, you don't like when it comes. By chance. But now you're going to come that. I can't forget one day in my local church back then, and the pastors that was preaching said, even me that are preaching, you are not sure. <laughs> How will you not be sure? And you are preaching. Where Peter and Paul were they on shore, he said, and we are his witnesses. Ha! You are coming from me and telling me you are He's not meant to. So you see, he is very big, so that he can get us back. He's to walk in us like He wants to be manifest. That means. When they look at his sons and daughters, our strongest consciousness will be the strongest thing they can perceive from us to be. That's God's desire. That truly me and you are effulgences of his person. That's why we need to pray. That's why we need to join. So that means now, my transformation is a partnership with God. You have to hold me hand in hand so that I can be transformed and become very safe for you to do what? So that I won't move my head. How was it possible? Hello. The word canon is a derogatory word. Okay, so for you, it's almost like somebody in Europe will last and last. Hello. That's what it means. Without spirit. But the truth is, when you look at what Paul said concerning the Corinthian church, let's go to First Corinthians. Because now I want you to understand why you need to grow. It's so that God can be seen through you. It's not that so that you can be on Facebook. Have a personal desire for God to be made real in your life. That should be the ambition. Not for microphone. I was still telling a brother yesterday, I said, see, eh, I will not allow this thing we are doing post my spiritual development. Because you see, you can give your growth for this thing. I listen to me. So that you do not go beyond. So 1 Corinthians 3, let's see. I want to show certain things. First Corinthians chapter 3, who's going to help us read from verse 1 to verse 3? Mm-hmm. Uh 
Hallelujah. He says, are you not carnal and walk as what? As men. Now, were these guys believers? They are believers because uh, in 1 Corinthians, sorry, even in that chapter, verse 1 rather, he called them babes in Christ. So they were in Christ. Are you following? And to be in Christ is to have the spirit of Christ. So obviously they had the spirit. But he says they still walked as men and they are what? Canal. So what does it mean to be canal? Is that you are still subjected to the leadings of the flesh, to the dictates of the flesh. Can you tell your neighbor this? The fact that you bo got born again eh, did not cancel the flesh. The flesh is real. Tell him. What Paul was saying here is, these are guys that have the spirit of God in them, the spirit of Christ in them, the born again spirit. They are spirit filled. Are you listening to me? But yet, they were still carnal. They still walked as men. Why? Because the flesh was still what? The governing part of their life. The flesh was still responsible for their decisions. Are you following me? The flesh was the dictator in their temple, not their spirit. So he had to in quotes, rebuke them and say, see, you could not bear the things I wanted to actually say. Because you are still what? A babe. Canon. So, a babe in Christ is still governed by the flesh. It does things more by feelings than by faith. Hello? Now, some of you, you say, I don't feel like praying today. There's no vibe. <laughs> ah! Hello? Uh, yeah, yeah, still a babe. When you have, you know, tonight later I'll talk on prayer. You will know that when it comes to prayer, it's not always that there's vibe. There are days that you will be the vibe for it before the Holy Ghost will come and take over. Hallelujah. So, Paul was still telling them that the most dominating force in their life was what? Flesh. So what happened? Envying was much. Jealousy was what? Was there. Why? Because the flesh was still the strongest part of their lives. Hallelujah. So, the development of the believer right now is to lead him from where he is governed by his flesh now to be governed by his spirit that is within him. Did you hear what I said? That your development is to lead you to the point where you are no longer just governed by your flesh. Now it is your spirit, that born again spirit that governs you. Because right now for the believer, and I know I've said this many times in this gathering, not this weekend, but you know in previous past, how that our spirit has been mingled with the spirit of God. Are you listening to me? So we have a mingled spirit. That my spirit and God's spirit is one. Just as a man and a woman become one. Are you following me? My spirit and God's spirit is one. So if my spirit dominates me, who is dominating me also? The spirit of God. Are you following this? If my spirit dominates my life, then... God also is dominating what? My life. So the carnal, in quote, believer is the one that has the life of God, the spirit of God in him, but he is still governed by what? By the flesh. And our development is to lead us to that point where in our waking, we wake up in the spirit. Hello? In our waking, as in you are just waking up from your bed, your spirit is the most dominant part of yourself. You're not saying, bros, just give me 30 minutes to speak in tongues. 
<laughs> because so much you have learned how to walk in the path of life that your spirit has gained increasing ground in you. That that is now your normalcy. They are not saying, ah, I was high yesterday. No, God wants you to be high every day. Are you following? That's why the scripture says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Many times we read that scripture as though God is saying, those of us that are following, you know, the, the, the leading of the Spirit. No, what he's talking about is that you, your life now, the leading personality in your life now is who? The Spirit of God. Because if you look at the context he was speaking about that in Romans 8, it was about the Spirit taking over our lives. And no longer death us to the flesh, to live after the flesh, but to who? To the spirit of God. So the more we begin to yield to the Holy Ghost, the more that the Holy Ghost will be taking us up. And this our body will begin to yield to the dictates of the spirit. Oh my God. That's why some of us that were caught up in masturbation those days, we are no longer masturbating. You know why? A spirit has taken charge. And masturbation is not his behavior. Are you listening to me? It's clear that when the Holy Ghost begins to take over a man's life, even his body will follow suit. Ah, in that day we will have grown so much and allowed the capacity of our spirit to take charge of our lives that our waking moments were in the spirit. This earth will not shroud heaven from us. What was God making out of Adam that we saw in the garden of God? God caused sleep to fall upon the man. Hello? And let me not say sleep. He said what? Deep sleep. Deep sleep. I mean deep sleep. You know those kind of sleep that you say, oh, that talk? Those kind of sleep that you don't know what was going on around you. And suddenly that man woke up. And he saw a woman. He didn't say your beautiful life. Hello? Because some of you, it was you that woke up. It's because flesh is still the strongest part. Did he say, wow, if you are ebony, black and shiny? He woke up and looked at her. He said, Kai, you were taken out of the man. I did it. Because you see, your spirit does not sleep. Hello? Your spirit does not sleep. The spirit was the strongest part of that man. That man that was trying to emerge out of that garden. The spirit was the strongest part of that man. And we saw a man called Jesus that in his spirit was the strongest part of him. Hello? He knew how to have joy so much that his very life now depends on the Holy Ghost. Jesus was hungry and very tired. Very hungry and tired. And he was hungry. In fact, he sent his disciples to go and buy food for him. And they came back. I said, Baba Iwaja. And he said, Kai, I have food that you guys don't know about. Ah, who gave him food? If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in him, what will he do? He will put him. It was clear that there was a spiritual supply in that moment. There are, see, when we begin to give ourselves to the things of the spirit, the Holy Ghost can bear this weak body up. If I was listening to the dictates of my own flesh, I should not be standing before you. Because what the flesh is seeing is that you are tired. They are weak. But thank God, he says, when others say they are weak, what will we say? Listen to me. The strongest you that God wants is you that is in your spirit. So obviously the journey of the believer is to make the flesh weaker but the spirit what? Stronger. The dominating force in his life. The dominating force in his life. The dominating force. And it's in order to begin to achieve this. The first thing that God said us we should do is that we should reckon ourselves dead unto sin. Now, I need to explain to you why that is the first thing. Because you see, the believer now, the Bible says the spirit dwells in our spirit, and that is life. But the body 
is dead because of what? Of sin. That's Romans 8 9. Somebody should read that for us. Romans 8. I want to show you something. any man have not the spirit of Christ and I told you the spirit of Christ is that born again what? Spirit. Yes. Yes. Verse 10. If Christ be in you uh -huh, the body is dead because of what? Uh -huh. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, so what, what does this mean? In the believer there is still sin. But where is that sin? Are you following me? Joshua, are you following me? That sin is where? In your body. That's why people like John say, if we say that we have this, the truth is not what? And we what? Some people say, no, it's not us. That thing is talking to my brother. It's us. But we know where the location of this sin is. Where is it? So you must understand that what ministers say is not coming from your spirit. Where is it coming from? Now you must also understand this. I need to let you know this as we move. Just write it in your daughter. Because I, I want to talk on this spiritual development. On to manifesting as such. In your spirit dwells the spirit of God. The spirit of Christ. Abi? In your mind hmm? dwells the unrenewed mind. Sorry, in your soul rather dwells what? Unrenewed mind. What is that unrenewed mind? It's the programming of your former conversations in the flesh. Your former conversations as an old man. Your former conversation as someone that did not have the spirit of God. You getting born again did not delete it. It did not format it. Did you get what I'm saying? It did not format it. So, there are still ways in you that is not the way of God. Then in your body, dwells what? Sin. Those three layers. So, for the carnal believer, the dominant component of him is his body. I listen to you. And in my own opinion, what scriptures call flesh is actually your own renewed mind and then with the dictations of sin in your body. That's flesh. Flesh is a more encompassing word. Are you following me? Flesh is all renewed mind with what? The dictates of sin that does where? In your body. But your spirit is where the spirit of God is. Is where God wants to flow out from and dominate every aspect of our lives. <laughs> and you know somebody once said something that I loved. He said, that's why you see, a seed, the cover is hard. Have you? But you see, who wants to grow out? Where is it? Inside. Have you seen a bean seed before? Have you seen which other seeds risk? All those mango seeds. One will grow out is inside. But it's under what? Hard cover. Yeah. That's how we are. There's a person that needs to break forth. That is renewed after Christ in image and knowledge. And he has to go out of that hard cover. Are you listening to me? Because if now you are going to pursue this for our lives, and truly really cause God to manifest in our life, then we must know how to constrain ourselves. We must know how to follow what God has for us. And I'm telling you, you will never be comfortable for your flesh. That's why, you see, not many people oftentimes manifest the God kind of life in generations. Why? Because not all are willing to pay the price for this life of God that is in them to be made manifest. We would rather sing it than pay the price. Are you listening to me? There is, and that price is not, is a walk. The price is a walk. Are you listening to me? A walk. 
he walk. Now, so that Romans here we were reading. Okay, we've, we've already explained. So in verse 11, he said, But if the spirit of him that raised us from the dead dwell in you, what will he do? By spirit that does what? That dwells in you. Therefore, we are no longer what? Debtors. To live what? After the flesh. Hello? We are no longer what? Debtors. To live after the flesh. But what? What does it say? It says we are no longer debtors. Sorry, brethren, we are debtors. Now, that's what I wanted to emphasize. We are what? Debtors. Not to the flesh. I want you to tell yourself, oh, basically. Ah! But you see, the base is not to what? The flesh. But to? The spirit. Because you see, the sacrifice of Jesus has provided sufficient capital to make it achievable. Hello? It's not like you say you want to start business and they gave you the capital. If you do not stretch your hand into the money, can you start that business? Can you make most things? So the capital that the resurrection of Jesus has provided is enough to actually cause you to be transformed. Are you listening to me? So he's saying, saying yeah, not to the flesh, but to what? Because you see, the flesh will still be clamoring. So you have to tell us. The first thing we have to embrace is to reckon that we are what? We are dead. So Romans 6.14. So I, we can go back now with this understanding. Abby? So Romans 6.14. Reckon means to take account. Reckon means to take it so. Are you listening to me? To take it to, to accept it that way. Romans 6, sorry, verse 11. Likewise, account yourselves what? Also, to be what? To be what? To be what? Where was Paul bringing up this inspiration from? Because our old man has been crucified with him. That the body of sin might be what? Might be destroyed. So he's saying, something has happened in the spirit already. In the cross. That that body of sin has been destroyed. So he says, likewise, reckon yourself. Take account of yourself to be that what? You are dead unto what? Unto sin. But alive unto God through who? Let not sin, therefore what? Now, the first place where you need to take guidance is your body. Are you listening to me? Where you need to take, I know you want to win territories, but can I tell you? Before God will give us territories, He will give us small, small things first. And you see, the first thing that I've seen in scriptures is that a man that cannot rule his body cannot rule a land. So the first thing is that Paul is teaching this so that every one of us can know how to deal with our body. He says, let not sin therefore reign in what? Tell yourself, I have the power to prevent sin from reigning in my mortal body. Are you following? You see, a believer that feels powerless against sin is abnormal. See, see, I, I can't do anything about this, thing. my brother. Now, you need to go back to the word of God and remind yourself that he has said that let not. He didn't say pray that your pastor will pray for you. Who did he command? Because now the spirit of the Son is in you. The spirit of righteousness is in you. You have the ability to be able to say no to sin. Are you listening to me? You have the ability to say no to sin. He said, let not sin do what? Therefore reign. 
verse 13. Neither what? Yield ye your members. So it's clear that your members will still be speaking. But he's giving you a command. Do not what? Yield. You are what? You are a debtor to the spirit. Not to what? And that body of sin has been dealt with on the cross. You must believe this. That the power of sin has been what? Has been broken. Legally. The place where your guardianship must start is on this body. Because if you allow sin reign in your body, you are giving Satan a chance to reign. Hello? Why are you giving a chance to reign? And can I tell you, that's the first junction in the path of spiritual progress. If we are going to be able to develop, that all of us must recall that indeed we are dead unto sin. You must tell yourself over and over again. I know we like that one, that one. We like confessing that one more. And the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Eh, as you are confessing that one, as it's over, tell yourself to what? I am dead. Righteousness is powerful. I want you to know that it shames God when sin is dealing with you. Hello, in the spirit, spirit should just be laughing. Better go a lot more long. See how lost is sitting over his life. And yet, you have been empowered. Are you listening to me? You see, this reckoning is something I would stress before I move. You must. If you sleep today, you must stand up and say, No, I am indeed what? Dead or to sleep. Can I tell you? If you are not violent about victory over sin, victory will not become experiential in your life. Hello? All these doctrines that some of us have heard is to make us less worried about gunning for a victorious life in Christ Jesus. They say, Whoa, oh, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am masturbating. Say, Yes, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My brother, as much as it's true, God, that thing is not giving God praise. You should fight. Now, that fight is not that you are fighting against masturbation. You are acknowledging and reckoning that even though this is my present experience, this is not where I will end. I used to tell people, and it's me that should have gone forgotten about you know, wanting to live a righteous life. After that message came around, so just, in fact, I can't forget one that I heard those days. A roommate played it. He said, even if a believer kills five people, and then kills himself, he's still a child of God. Hello? Who is that child of God that can kill one person and no alarm rang? Eh? Because many of us don't know that there is a law of the spirit of life at work in us. Is that law that tells you things that you might not have even seen inside by you? You've not seen it, but that law speaks to you. Say that thing is not there is a law of spirit of life at work in the believer. Somebody now tells you, Where did you see it inside the Bible that we should not smoke? You've not had those kind of arguments before. People know, and you'll be belly. Did Jesus turn water to wine? That's why he said we should not drink. Those are people that do not know the law of spirit of life because that's the law that has delivered us from sin and death and will deliver us as we learn to yield to that law within us telling us the way we should go and what we should not touch you will find that you will find freedom I was like who, who does that kill five people they now what kills is there no law of the spirit of life in me this thing I'm telling is like 2011 I hear that message it's, ah, 2011 22, 22. My spirit was grieved 
greed. What is this? Hallelujah. So reckon. If you reckon yourself there, hmm, you must also reckon that the Spirit of God knows you. And that Spirit governs you by the law of the Spirit of life. Are you listening to me? You see, Paul was using that as an analogy to explain to us that the Holy Ghost has something is pursuing in us. I listen to you. That's why you see there will be some things you will do that you may not have even read it in the Bible. What is guiding you? The law of the spirit of life. Later, now you say, ah, I did not know this thing, though. but I was doing it. How? The law of what? Of the spirit of life. That's how when Paul began to address the Corinthian church, he said, Know ye not that the spirit of God dwells where? In you. You see, when a man is conscious about the indwelling spirit, hmm, it will help him overcome sin. Experientially. Because everything that has been purchased on the cross is done in us now by the spirit of God. So Jesus is sat down at the right hand of the Father, but the spirit is in us to walk what? The works of salvation. So he told us, walk your, out your salvation with what? With fear and tremble. For it is God that is what? At work in you. How is God at work in you? By his spirit, through the law of the spirit of life. Hallelujah. So he says, know ye not that you are what? The temple of the Lord. The Holy Ghost wants to reap righteousness in you. And listen to me. So that for some of you now, you might know ongoing wars in yourself. Are you following me? You know the things you are still trusting God for. Me too, I have. The things I'm trusting God for in my life. But he says, so no matter where I go, and I say, man of God, I do not forget that I'm a man of infirmities. But the Spirit has been given to help what? My infirmities. So we're not, you, you can't make our heads work. Because when God is weighing us, it's not what we do on the pulpit, it's what we do in the secret. Are you listening to me? So you cannot reckon yourself to death because you see, it's not just that alone. You know, there is a person that lives in you now that is to achieve righteousness. It's not going to be by your power, it will be by his power. So Malachi prophesied. He said, when he shall come to his temple, he will sit and porch. My God sit like a full of soap, have you? And what? And a refiner's fire. And do what? And pour. There is a generation that wants to take territories but they don't want to be purchased. Hello? And I've made up my mind, I will walk in righteousness. Because I've seen our generation the way we are going. Things happen in our meetings but things don't happen in territory. And I've found out that key that is missing is this way of holiness. Holiness, a raw one that is the spirit of God has crafted it, not a religion. You see, the reason I'm wearing this cap this way is holy cap. No ring, nothing. If the Holy Ghost didn't tell you you should stop wearing ring or necklace, you are doing it for yourself. That's why you can tell Sister A, no earring, and Sister B, you can put the best lipstick on. The law of the spirit of life is also individualized. Oh my God. I can tell you now from some years now I'm not eating breakfast. It's not inside Bible. For six years, I can count the number of times I've eaten breakfast. I didn't eat it inside Bible. But the law of the spirit of life began to make me know that for your shape, this is like the way you will be going. So my wife is not used to cooking any in the way. Hello? Because she knows that her husband will not eat anybody. But if God blesses you with your husband that he eats my sister, that's you. You need to wake up early. Because when he needs that food to engage the day, we are all different. Hallelujah. The same God that was at work in Jesus, that they said he was eating up and down, was the same God that was at work in John the Baptist that fasted up. And when he eats, he will eat bugs and lick on him. The same God. 
So can I tell you, in this journey, you need to know the Holy Ghost for yourself. Because it says, from the least to the greatest, they shall all know me. Hallelujah. They will be taught of God. So there are general things and there are private things. If you now say, ah, but you said, doesn't you prefer you to go? You might like me, I'm also. Because that might not be your way. I listen to you. So the same way you get married, you should get fat and milk, you see. And say, I have no problem. Begin to do that. Okay, you have one chest, no, I don't have a problem. But now I'm just planning to let you know. There is a force of righteousness within me. Tell yourself there is a force of righteousness within me. Look at all those old missionaries, Paul. They will enter territories, they can't speak in tongues like us, but demons packed out of those territories. What made them pack out? Because they loved righteousness and hated iniquity. So their God has anointed them with the oil of gladness. They had nothing, they came with Eucharist, communion, and demons were living. No tongues, nothing. Just the scriptures. There's something they need. I've seen our generation. We are loud on tongues, but we are quiet on holiness. When we hear things, I say, eh, Lord preacher, Lord preacher. In your mind, why are you telling us all this? That's why we will remain this way. That's why we will fall in meetings and nothing changes outside. Are you following me? I'm not moved by the number of people following your YouTube stream. I'm saying by your standing is the life of God and meeting into the land. That a man like John Wesley stood and that place they didn't sell alcohol for 100 years. Can I tell it was in tongues? It was a life of holiness that that man knew. So that means if they give it to somebody after that time and live for 70 years, you didn't know what beer looked like. Why? Because a man stood that holiness has gotten a ground. But what said the scripture? He said the sons, they will possess their possessions. Say upon Mount Zion, what would there be? Upon Mount Zion, what would there be? And what will happen? What would they do? They will possess their possessions. Are you listening to me? It was a way for them, for the patriarchs. We don't talk about these things again. How the force of righteousness are working us. How that it is possible that he that is righteous is he that doeth righteousness. And I say, uh, don't look at what I'm doing. Look at the man on the stage. Who? Who? Look at the man where? Look at the man where? Can I tell you, Jesus was the same son of God while he slept and while he preached. If you are different, you are fake. Are you listening to me? I will walk in righteousness. When my generation is saying, no, you have to mellow, you have to calm down now, go let on here. No, the force of righteousness is on my inside. I am dead unto sin. I have reckoned myself so, and I will walk that way. I will not be among those that has caused, you know, they are just looking at women, naked women on the internet. My God, man of God, you need to be delivered. That's why we are preaching, and the roads don't feel what we are doing. We have thought that holiness is for the old timers. Can I tell you holiness is for every generation? Every generation. Jesus said, the prince of this world coming. He had nothing, nothing. Can you say it? And you see, we will say it. Because the force of righteousness will so much win in us that Satan will have no ground. Can I tell you, every sin is a ground for him. Is a what? Is a ground. But the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Oh my. Can I tell you, you can't win him when he has a place. You see, in scriptures, when we study Satan, you see, there was a special kind of thing. Even Michael could not bring really the accusations. He said, I rebuke you by the name of the Lord. To cast out Satan is not good, it's by life. <laughs> Hello, it's by what? By life. This world will hear that only you can satisfy hey. rivers of living water out of my depths. This world will hear. That only you can satisfy oh. rivers of fear. 
water out of my death out of my death shall flow rivers of holiness Hi. out of my death living water out of my death shall flow rivers holiness a generation has left that place they are saying other things but I come again as one saint of God that if we are going to be that generation that will possess possessions then we must know the way of holiness He said, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He said, He that had clean hands does not lift up his soul unto vanity. There are grounds that need to be possessed, but God is looking for men with clean hands. Out of my debt, out of my debt, shall flow rivers. There's a cry. Ale Milan Tabali Kan Korea. Abemeleke Soma Takikate. Holiness is a must. It's a follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see God. If they will see him in our lives, we must know holiness. I will not join the wasting of time in my generation. Many meetings, but not shift in the territory. Because we have neglected this one thing. But thou hast loved righteousness. Oh my. This is a good place to cry. My desire. My desire. My desire is to walk with you, my Savior, on this road, until I am My desire, my desire, my desire is to walk with you. All these only journey until we go. Father, holiness, the spirit of holiness, and he was declared to be the Son of God according, according to the spirit of holiness, my Savior, according to the spirit of holiness. Can you reach out to God when you are? My desire, my desire is to walk with you, my Savior. On this old journey, on this I am home. My desire. Is to walk with you, my son. I cannot see you as you are, except you take over. I cannot walk. As you walk, except you take over, they come. Only God take over. They come. They take over. I cannot wait. Unless 
your Lord, your Lord. Help me to master the life of holiness. Help me to master the life of holiness. Oh, your God, yes, you are my one, you are my one, better. Make me a Puritan, oh God. Shall never worst that you are God. I'm working the Belaka book and the Boshan de la Bawakela. Let my garment be always worn. Happy as the Belaka book. Ajila Baba book. Happy as the Degala Borogola. I am a warrior. He had a sort of Borogola. He had a lot of Shia Barakana. I am a Baba Gobele. He had a self for a good. Righteousness is the force. 
Don't settle for less. Don't settle for less. It is possible through the Spirit of God. It is possible to walk in holiness. It is possible. It will not be by your strength, but by His Spirit. Not by power, but by might. But by His Spirit.
and you're gonna be low. Close to you. 
I want to know you more. Oh, it's your people. They want to see your face. Holy Lamb of Yahweh. You help us. You help us. You help us. You help us.
I was saying that you know we need to reckon indeed ourselves dead on to sin if we are going to make progress and advance and develop even as God has ordained for us. Hallelujah. We got to see that we need to reckon indeed ourselves dead. And you see, that's what also Jesus was saying in the Gospels. In Luke 9, 23. And he said, let anyone that will follow me, let him do what? Deny himself. And do what? Take up his cross. And do what? And follow me. That's the call of discipleship. That's how you will see it there. Deny yourself. Deny that old man. Are you listening to me? Deny that old man. Take up the cross. The cross in that context is enduring the suffering that the denial of yourself brings to you. And follow me is to follow the dictates of my spirit where within you did you get what i'm saying so you see all those things in the gospels we can see interpret it in the light of the epistles that denial of self is the denial of the old man because the old man has been crucified take up your cross is the enduring of that denial and following me is allowing yourself to be led by the dictates of what of the spirit so let's read the message version so that you can get that you know and and, and see this and understand this Luke 9 23 to 25 message and this is somebody who has an evangelistic voice to read Luke 9 23 to 25 in the message the message anyone that intends to Come with me as to let me lead. Yes. You are not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. What did he say? Embrace it. Yes. Follow me. Eh? Yeah. Verse 24. Self-help is not what? Yeah. Self sacrifice is the way. Mm -hmm. My way. So self sacrifice is Christ's way. Mm -hmm. Now, to find in yourself your true self. So that means if a believer follows the dictates of the flesh, what will he lose? In, who is that true self? the new man in the spirit do you get that so that in KJV it reads like if you love yourself you lose it that's how KJV reads Abi? but if you lose yourself for my sake then you do you find it or you will save it because you must understand that there is a you you after the flesh I listening to you and now there is a you after the spirit. So in this journey of spiritual development, we're actually learning to put on the new man. Are you following me? So in Ephesians 4.24, in Colossians 3.10, you will see things like put on the new man. The putting on of the new man is actually the finding of what? Your real self. That this thing is telling us about. I hope I'm not confusing. So that means covenant in you now there is a covenant that had been from the Benjo family are you getting me but now there is a covenant now that ought to come out in Christ and God is saying if you hold up to the covenant from Uluwag Benjo house you will not become the covenant of Christ so you need to lose one are you following me so that's why in scriptures you hear things like put on the new man because there is an 
old man that was, that has been dealt with by the cross, that you now must cooperate with the Holy Ghost to put on a new person so that that person we used to know before, we don't see him again. So before they used to tell you that, and then we so near, and then we so. Have you heard that kind of thing before? That your mouth is as sharp as a blade. You can abuse anybody and cut them down. You see, that was you in the flesh. God do not have to deal with your mouth. So when you want to even abuse people, you don't have their ability. It's not that you are for me. That's the power of the cross. Are you listening to me? That's the power of the cross. So you see, somebody pours water on you mistakenly. You know that yourself before. And then raise up. You will have finished the person. Now the person will look at himself and be like, God, is this me? Hello? I, I, have you been there? That something will be biting you to reply, but the Holy Ghost will be holding and say, Sister, this is not the way a child of God behaves. And you see, ha, something is paining you. You want to cut his size for him. Are you listening to me? But something is holding you back. You see, you are enduring. So everybody saying, ah, ah, come here now. One of them has to go. Ah, they don't know that we'll teach gentle, but there's one that is working on you. Hallelujah. That is working on you. That they don't know that the way you came quite there, it was as though you were dying. Oh, you don't get. You were dying. You know yourself. The capacity you have, first class in abusive language. A1 student in katakata talk. And now, God is now dealing with you. You know I'm talking this way because myself, I've gone through it. The school I first went to before I came to you, I was OAU, Ilefe. And that time in ETF, block five. When they take light, you see people banging pot, banging, imagine. Are you listening to me? Banging pot, and by the time we start abusing, you wonder, are these the sons of me or the sons of the devil? Because things that you will hear people say will be like, God. So by the time I got to you, I, I continued in that spirit. So in room I enter, I'll finish this one, finish that one. People will laugh. I know the thing is making them happy until Jesus came. And he had to take that thing from me. Ah! So I cannot go back to that room now and make them laugh and happy. Why? There is a dealing of that old man. Are you following? There's someone you are doing. But can I tell you, the new man will not come out if the old man is not giving way daily. That's why the renewing of mind is very important. So that the new man can comfort in God's brilliance. Hallelujah. They're like, ah, 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 we are the ones that God has helped. Are you listening to me? It's because the Holy Ghost has done something in us. Hallelujah. So you see, if you follow the dictates of the flesh, you will lose your real self. Because it's now to God, your real self is the one in Christ. The Pharaoh me in Christ. The Paul in Christ. And the only way that one can come out is when the outward man has been dealt with. So before, you are part of those that eat a bar by 6 a.m. You know when others say, I just want to have gold in my... <laughs> it doesn't work that way for me. <laughs> a bar by 6 a.m. So when others are, when people's eyes are turning by 11, they want to go and buy snacks. Your eyes are still straight. Are you listening to me? Then God now calls you onto days of fasting. Say, ah. And the day you choose to fast is when your roommate will choose to cook one sweet food. Now be saying, I'm no longer fasting today. You see, the more you do that, you are postponing the revelation of the new man. Are you listening to me? Because you see, 
the Holy Ghost will constrain us. And the way we yield to that constraint of the Spirit is to the degree that the new person will begin to burst forth. Can I tell you, our growth is based on you deadness. It's not on how long you stayed in a church building. It's you deadness. There are people that say, job or you say, ah, this person has stayed in church for 20 years, but he's not you dead one bit. Are you listening to me? So that's why Paul was saying, you your members, you your members. Because now you have to actively yield. So before you, you hit 6 a.m., you hit 7 a.m., papa nakara. And you see, your soul is yoked to that akara and pap. There's a way that akara smells in the morning. Are you listening to me? But you see, when the Holy Ghost wants to help you, He will supply grace. You'll be wondering, how was I able to fast? And this Akara woman came. That's grace. But you see, there'll be days when you will, you will look as though it did not supply. It is you that will discipline and say, say no, we'll say we are fasting. Why is it that the time we plan to fast, food comes around? It's clear that devil knows that fasting will help you. Are you listening to me? The days you are not fasting, food do not easily come around you. The day you just say, ah, beginning of the month, let me just do three days to open, to open April, to open May. Then your roommate just said, he just gave me chicken. Ah! And they said, you're going to fast for three days on fruit. You'll be saying, Lord, let me just add chicken to the fruit. Nothing will happen. You see, the dictates of the Spirit will constrain you. And I want you to understand this. The Holy Ghost are bringing those trainings so that the force of righteousness can fill you more and more. Are you listening to me? Fasting helps this work. This is a, is a culture. Jesus did not say if you fast. He says what? When. So as a believer, you should have when you fast. And say, ah, why should I fast? We are not having, it's not the end of the year. It's not the end of the year you fast so that no death will carry you on Hello? So you are now having weekly fasts. Because there are habits of a believer that you don't need a pastor to tell you. Every week, Juliet, you should have a time you fast. It's not every day you wake up and say, ah, there's pop, pop, there's pop, pop. You must say, God, I dedicate Thursdays for fasting. Are you listening to me? It will become a pact between you and God. You should have a fasting schedule, not a eating schedule alone. Call a day. Fast. It's part of the disciplines of righteousness. Hello? Because you, when you are not engaging all these disciplines, you find that you are so weak to walk in the path. That's when you find that you are watching season film or ending. Bro, stand up, go and pray again. When you are on fire for God, you can't stay long at some things. Are you following me? So you see, he says self-discipline, self-suffering, you will endure it. I, see, the flesh likes pleasure. See, if I tell you what your flesh wants, you just want somebody to just be rubbing you. And they just open your mouth and they put grape inside. They put strawberries on. This world is wonderful. The flesh likes pleasure. Are you listening to me? He likes pleasure. So don't think that your flesh will like to pray. Prayer is not pleasurable. What happened was that as you began to give yourself to it, your body now began to yield because as you were giving yourself to regular times of prayer, it was culturing your body. That you can say, ah, I feel like praying. You see, a man that feels like praying is because he has yielded and yielded and yielded, and yielded. So now his body too is ready to leap. But I can tell you, my sister, you only feel like praying when you come for hot meetings. But when you go back to your school and your place, it's dark. We cannot, you know, the excuse of the flesh. I cannot pray in the dark. Which other excuse do we have? It's rainy. What other one? Uh, I have assignments to do. There's an exam coming. Are you listening to me? What other things do we give? You know, the flesh eh, is the headmaster of excuses. Are you following me? 
headmaster of what? Excuses. He'll just tell you the reason. You see, your flesh can convince you why you should do something else. Who told you you need to fast for long? Who told you? Ah, Grace has gotten all these things. You can be fasting and just, you know, break by 12 noon or 9 a.m. <laughs> ah! That you stand on the finished works of Christ. And the, uh, and the flesh should just be, be, ah! Can I tell you, Satan cannot tell you to pray for long. He cannot encourage you in the things of the Spirit. What Satan can do is that you will now see that you are discouraged. You now bring condemnation to you. You say you want to pray for 10 hours. You see, the fact that you even had the heart to pray for 10 hours is good. I ended up praying 2 hours and slept the remaining 8 hours. Thank the Lord. Be grateful. Don't allow condemnation to enter your hand. When you are not going to say, ah, pray you, pray you. But uh, they don't say pray you, crash for 8 hours. The vigil was not a vigil. Don't get discouraged. This is how God raises all of us. Are you listening? But you see, you must understand that the dictates that the Spirit of God will be giving you, you it's first of all to imbibe disciplines for righteousness. Are you listening? Disciplines for righteousness. Disciplines. So as much as you will hear, click, click. You know all those things that pop up on your stuff? Somebody will tell you, Click, click. Why? Because I already seen that shape of that girl. Just click. It will not do anything. That's the flesh. But it's the Holy Ghost that will be telling you, no. Are you listening to me? Your spirit telling you, no. Then there will be a conflict. Hey, should I click or not? You see, the more you begin to yield to the spirit by ignoring those things, you are giving strength more to the hold of the spirit over you. Say this to yourself. If I obey my flesh more, my flesh will have more hold on me. But if I obey my spirit more, the spirit of God will have more hold on me. So you see, it's all or none. Either we want the spirit or not. Are you listening to me? So, that message version of Luke 9, 23, he has made us know that see, in following the Holy Ghost, it will not be easy. It will not be easy. Oh, it will not be easy. Oh, I'm telling you. I choose your way. I choose your way. Holy Ghost. I choose your way, I choose your way, I choose your way, Holy Ghost. It will not be easy, oh, it will not be easy, eh. I choose your way, oh, I choose your way, I choose your way. The more you choose his way, the more his old gets stronger on you. People now be asking, I thought you are a very busy person. How are you doing? It's because he has more hold on you. Are you following me? He has hold on you. He has hold on you. We live in obedience to the Spirit. The Bible says that he learned obedience by the things he what? He suffered. So you see, in this school of obedience to the Spirit, you will do what? You will suffer. For this present suffering cannot be compared to the weight of glory that shall be revealed what? within us. You see, if somebody that has not caught the vision and revelation of the glory of God that will be revealed in him, that will think fasting is, is a problem. Are you following me? Jesus too had to learn obedience to the, by the things he suffered. He was learning to, to beat his body under. And I'm saying it to you, it will never be easy. But it's doable. It is possible. Are you following? And you see, as your flesh initially is only saying, mm -hmm, but as you begin to do it repeatedly, so that even your body will begin to flow. Will begin to yield easily. 
Alléluia. All right, so even as much as the Spirit of God begins to show us that he has a desire, a will for us to walk in the path of righteousness, it will also begin to put in us habits for righteousness. And I've mentioned one in passing. Fasting is a habit of righteousness. Prayer is a habit of what? Studying of God's word is a what? So there are habits. Reading of scripture should be a habit. Don't say, I cannot read the Bible now because I am not in my secret place. My brother, reading is a culture, is a habit. Even if you don't get to study at that point, read. Do you get what I'm saying? It's a habit that we should learn. All right, let's move forward. Because we're talking about spiritual development. Growing. And growing is actually putting on the new man. That's transformation. That that new person in Christ Jesus is getting manifest through you. Hallelujah. So tell yourself, it will not be easy in this retreat now. Is it easy? But you understand that there's something God is trying to purchase in you. There's something God is trying to bring out in you. Who likes saying word for long? Except him that's already been trained. That, and after, that was then I say, <coughs> my wife, this is the same time she says that thing. That the reason why people can't endure long preaching is because they don't have a rich Bible study life. Some of us don't know what it means to be stuck in front of scriptures for hours. <coughs> so you cannot be listening to someone teach for hours. Because even you yourself, you can't stay long in front of your Bible that way. Hello? Let's move on. I don't want to look for trouble. Let's just move on. All right. Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit will begin to put a desire for the Word of God <clears throat> in us. I listen to you. It is not normal for a Christian not to love the Word of God. Are you listening to me? It's abnormal. I say, me, I am a praying Christian. No, I have nothing to do with the Word of God. No wonder you are quoting Genesis in Mark. Are you listening to me? <clears throat> Can I tell you this? All those habits I've mentioned, they work synergistically. Did you get what I said? They work synergistically. <clears throat> when you wake up in the morning, what are the things that you do? You brush. And what do you do? You bathe. And what do you do? You dress up. It makes you look well-groomed, well-kept, Abby. All those things you are doing, what is it to achieve? A good appearance. Are you listening to me? Can I tell you, fasting, word, prayer is to achieve a good believer. It's to achieve the Son of God. Are you following me? So you, the, 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 the Holy Ghost puts the desire for the word of God in our heart. That's when, when Paul said in Ephesians 1, that since the day I heard of your faith and of your love towards the saints, he says, I began to pray for you that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, what will he do? He will grant unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Because you see, if you don't have the spirit of wisdom and revelation activated in you, the Bible will be boring. And I can tell you many saints are not reading their Bible because it is boring to them. And why is it boring? The spirit of wisdom and revelation is not what? It's not activated. So when you see their notes, and David killed Goliath, he threw the stone once. In fact, it hit Goliath on his forehead. Hi. Hi. 
Whereas the one that has the spirit of his revelation will say, before he threw the stone, he won. Hallelujah. That the battle was not fought at that moment. It was fought when they were exchanging words. Another one will say, ah, this, this, this Jacob now, wicked person. See how he still is a blessing. Thou shalt not steal people's blessing. But yet, he doesn't know the mystery that is locked in that. That, that. that Jacob that knelt before Isaac, he says, your voice is like Jacob, but you feel like Esau. Oh my God. That's a mystery. It's the same way that when we come before God now, he feels Christ and hears you. So he treats you like Christ instead of treating you like you because now you have been clothed with Christ's righteousness. Hello? A believer ought to pray and say, God, open your word to me. And listen to me. Open your word to me. It should not be like a storybook. And listen to me. Because the word is a tool for your growth. So if you don't have access... What, what is happening to you? You won't grow. Hallelujah. So the spirit of wisdom and revelation is actually lenses for you to be able to begin to see clearly into Christ Jesus. So that when you pick up scriptures, you see beyond letters. You see Christ and his word to you. So Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That proceeds where? Out of the mouth of God. You see, the first place where you need to first of all learn how to hear God is even, is even from the written word. The speaking word from the pages. Because this word will begin to train your senses on how to hear God. Because you see, God is not locked inside this book. But these scriptures is to help us to begin to cultivate our spiritual senses. So that if you hear God talk to you on the road, you can say, ah, that's the voice I learned from reading scriptures. Hello? That, that's the voice I learned from reading scriptures. That's the voice I learned, I knew, from the reading of scriptures. It's the one I heard now when I was working on, by Mokola that spoke to me that be, before you get back to your room, buy this thing for, uh, for Folu because she needs this or he needs this. Are you listening to me? Then you get to the room and you say, ah, I bought this thing. Ah, how did you know? Because you have learned how to culture your senses by the word. So that in so much that wherever you are, you can descend the Lord's voice. Glory to God. Growth is not an impartation. Spiritual development is not a gift. It's a discipline. An intentional effort. So you are as grown as you want to be. You are as developed spiritual as you want to be. Because when it comes to spiritual development, it is your work with Christ. Are you listening to me? It is not entirely God's thing. It is dictated much more by you. By your yieldedness. So Peter says, as newborn babes, Desire what? The sincere milk of the word that you may do what? That you may grow thereby. So that means if you do not desire the sincere milk of the word, you will not grow. See, don't let the number of meetings you attend hinder you from a private relationship in the word of God. Are you listening to me? I can even tell you, you will not be very blessed in all those meetings if you don't know the word. Very few people can stay like this and now, you know, teach you line upon line. Everybody will just do pa 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 pa. The monarch of Zion, the you know, and they just you your spirit will just be rumbling ah because the man is great. He has great utterance. He's just giving you the bullets of the Holy Ghost. Wah wah wah. And you're just getting stared. You are stared, but you don't know why. So when, they, when you leave, say, what did you learn? Oh, more that man, they talk. <laughs> because 
Baba teach, teach. It will just be quoting from scriptures. If you allow you to process it with your, with your mind. Are you listening? Do you know the taking time to read it yourself is helping you? So be like, ah. So you two will do the ah in the middle. Can I be sincere with you? I grew up listening to teachers. People that will break Bible in your front. You'll be like, ah, 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 ah. They will break it. Bah, 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 bah. You see all those machine gun preaching? You need it sometimes, not always. Just to stir yourself up. Say, yes, yes. And that's why we do both. We teach and preach. Hallelujah. So you see, desire the sincere milk. If a baby that is born today does not desire his mom's milk, he will never grow. If you also do not desire the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, what will happen? You will never grow. So about manifesting or being manifestation of the sons of God, it will be a far away thing. Because the tool for your growth, you have left it. Are you following me? So you must tell yourself, I must stay near the world if I will be built up. Can I tell you, prayer is wonderful. But prayer is excellent when it's backed up with the revelation of God's word. Are you listening to me? Because actually in praying, you are speaking back his word to him. That's why if you check, when you pray, are praying about something, you find out that there, there is a revealed word that comes in that prayer that you now engage with. So that means that prayer is to lead you to a word to engage with. Prayer facilitates the word. Did you get that? Prayer does what? Facilitates the word. And builds that word into you. Popo. Builds it. Builds it. Builds it. So that you are gaining stature. You are gaining stature. You are studying God's word and gaining stature. And can I tell you, gaining stature is in the secret place. You can't gain stature on the pulpit. Stop fighting for the mic in fellowship. You know what I'm saying? Which, yeah, check out the criminal. Ah! Campus fellowship brethren. Check out the criminal. Oh my God. Stay with the word. Say, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. There is no other formula to growth. It pains me when I get some people message me and say, Sir, how can I have stature like God? And you see, the word is more than these letters, it's a person. That was what Jesus said that he, I want to quote him by Batman. I hope I can remember how he said it. He said, he that feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Did, have you read that before in John chapter 6? He that feeds on my flesh and does what? And drinks my so people that were here and say, is this guy a cannibal? Because they were hearing it in the flesh. In fact, that was termed to be one of the hardest messages of Jesus. Are you listening to me? He that feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. The truth is, the word of God is necessary for your development. And prayer is to facilitate that word, to, to build it into yourself. That's why at times when you hear the word, you see you are stirred to pray. You know what's happening? You are trying to lambano what you heard. You are trying to lay hold of it and make it your own. Are you listening to me? 
You are just reading in scriptures and Jesus cleansed lepers and something hit you. My prayer life changed in 2013 when I studied the prayer life of Jesus. Because as I began to read, I saw that Jesus prayed and something left the Bible and entered me. I prayed all day. Ha! You know why? Because I was making that spirit of prayer that was on him my own. Are you listening to me? So, prayer now is, 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 is not looks like something we were born with, but we're not born with. It was because we reached out to God till we made it what? Our own. I say, ah. Some people have the gift of prayer. Nobody has the gift. Are you listening to me? It's just that we have exercised ourselves in the habit of prayer that it has become part of us. So prayer are like digestive enzymes. What are they doing? They are breaking it down for it to become nourishment to your bones and to your flesh. So what prayer does to the world is that it's beating that revelation into you. Oh my God. To make it part of you. So it's not just something you know in your head, but you know it in your heart. Hallelujah. So Peter says, desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Glory to God. Acts 20, verse 32. It's still the same thing I'm trying to let you understand. He <coughs> said, I commit you unto what? Unto God and to what? The word of his grace, which is able to do what? To build you up and give you what? An inheritance <coughs> among those that are what? Are sanctified. So the, my, my focus is that the word of God is able to do what? To build you up. In case somebody is thinking, my, you say, bro, bro, how can I study this Bible? I just want to answer your question briefly. You see, a believer ought to have a desire to want to read the Bible from beginning to the end. So he can start with the New Testament. I say, I want to read from Matthew to what? Revelation. And he can choose that he wants to read from Genesis to what? To Revelation. You see, there is no magic to it. If you start a new course, what will you do with the textbook? You will read this from the beginning to what? Ah. What will you do? Ah. Are you listening to me? Ah, can I tell you what you have not read, you cannot understand. So if you do not do the discipline of reading, you cannot understand it. No matter the amount of hands they lay on you, it cannot enter you. You need to sit down and do what? And read. The of manifestation you, it, it involves discipline. It involves being ready. And these simple things are important. Are you following me, please? So, which is able, the word of God has inherent ability to build you up, to cause you to gain stature. Oh my God. It's able to make you strong. He says, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. Why? Because the word of God abides in you. That means a young man in the faith is one that has taken the word of God into where? Himself. So when, he, when you squeeze him, what will come out? When he's under pressure, he doesn't say, let's use our common sense now. The only sense he knows is the sense of the word of God. Hallelujah. That is what the word is to do to us. And the word of God, when you begin to take in the word of God, the people will be like, these things sound simple, but can I tell you, the things of God are simple. Very simple. Take in the word of God. And you see, the word of God is a Gate to encounters. Hello? Is a gate what? Encounters. 
All those things that you like to see, you start learning how to stay with the world. I found myself inside the Bible before. Studying the scriptures late in the night, some years back. Late in the night. And that scripture where Jesus Christ says, who do men say that I am? I entered it. I saw it live. That when Jesus said, who do men say that I am? All the disciples were saying, ah, you are this. They were shouting. Do you know again? No, when you're asking children, I know them are They say you are this, you are this, you are this. All of them are just talking. And the next one they say, Who do you say that I, the son of man? All of them became silent. Now, that one is not there. But you see, it, oh, uh, in my study, God allowed me to do what? To experience in life. Are you following me? And when all of them became silent, suddenly, Peter spoke trembling that you are the son of the living God. You are Christ, the son of the living God. And I came out. But you see, you cannot see the emotions of what was taking place by yourself. That was just something God privileged me to experience. Are you following? Yes, sir. I can share examples in scriptures by just staying in scriptures. I come to see what happened in that time as though I will enter what the scripture was saying. But you see, you, you want to start from here now and you've not learned how to sit down with just John, the book of John. Just sit down with it for one hour. You've not learned that. They say, Lord, why can't I also enter the Bible? Something you have not opened. We forbid it in our midst that when you drop your Bible last Sunday is where you come to pick it again. Are you listening to me, please? These are habits and disciplines of righteousness. And we are seeing that these disciplines and habits will help us grow. Desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. He said, I commit you unto God and to the word of his grace, which is able to do what? To build you up. So before he will give you an inheritance, he will first of all do what? Build you up. And that's what I'm after to tell you. The building up of the word. The word of God is to build me up. So you see, when your mates are saying, why are you staying up late to study the Bible? It's because you know that you are on a journey to show God through your life. So you will endure it. Are you listening? You will endure it. That's why you will watch less matches. You know why you are watching less matches? Because you are giving more time. Don't think that that quick, quick money devotion you say you are doing, quick, quick, that you just wake up in the morning, say, thank you, Jesus, then you spend 30 minutes reading the Bible, and that's the end. That thing will not likely make you a giant. Too. Hello? I should not be that explicit. See, you will remain a dwarf. Either eat small will remain small. Are you listening to me? But he that knows how to eat large will be large. And you see, one of the ways is to tarry long at the word. Tarry long. The early church, Paul came and said, boys, I just, I'm not going to come because I want to teach. And he taught them all night. You today are already stretching paper to the guest minister after 45 minutes. That's why we are like this. Paul, oh, they are at, at Paul's mercy. A whole Paul. Some of us, if a whole Paul comes to your fellowship, you see stretch paper. Ten minutes more, sir. I'm even. Go to get here. The service can get back there. You see You see, Miss Ava, I've served in campus fellowship, and this is where the habits were we did not imbibe. How will somebody drive from Akure? And I'm giving him 45 minutes. That means his journey is longer than the time he came to preach. <laughs> is it not? Is it not summer? Is it of you to suck the Baba out? That when he's going back to Christ, he should be happy that he came. I you know our sisters, they know how to do it. 
45 minutes. The sermon on the mount, do you think, you see how long the jottings from that sermon was? Do you think that was a 45 minutes message? Sermon on the mount. People listen to Jesus for days hearing that. And the jottings of Matthew, jottings, you know jottings is not the length of the omit. We read it non-stop for three chapters. See, this Christianity was not carved in Okokomaiko. Are you listening to me? It is Christ that authored it. And if we are going to be able to see the strength of it, we must do it like the way he authored it. We should be able to have three days. You are just hearing the word till the word hits you. But you see, you, on and after, that's why they are still pressing you in the night. There's a way the word of God will have entered you so much that you are no longer pressable. Because if devil puts his hand on you, he will touch something that he cannot hold. Hello? He said, I'm always dreaming they are pressing me. The word content in you is low. I did, uh, see, may I hate the word voraciously. Vir- and the only time they tried pressing me on my bed, I shouted Jesus and the hand flew away. A hand as big as my body wanted to press my neck in C15, men and all. And I shouted, Jesus, the hand was very big. That's the last time, 2011 till now. When I got to ABH, people don't pray in ABH early in the morning. We were part of that, had to break that jinx. Because our days in UI then, it is tongues that will wake you up. I don't know how you are is now. But we are coming soon. Those days, I don't know how your campus is. What? But you are, yeah, 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 yeah. There was fire. I don't know how it is now, but there was fire. You yeah, are sleeping, those here. Quaka, quaka. Ah! <laughs> Tongues waking you up. You will know that you can be late to Maracana. Those days, you are late. Melan B um, basketball court. You are late already. You know why? I to come So you'll be struggling to wake up first. Lest your spot be taken. I cannot go and say, bros, this is my spot. Your name is not there. So the only way to keep your spot is to wake up early. Rising great while before dawn. They say, eh, great while before dawn. Yes, sir. If you are not great while before dawn, then you must be a late night man. It was the only ghost that told me this. I said, Jesus. You are saying that Jesus, Jesus, uh, Jesus, you rose a great while before the bomb. I'm still awake 3 a.m. He said, because you are not like me. Me, I need to go to bed. But I don't want to do video. But you, I wired you to be a night crawler. When it's night, I'm more happy. Because I can be alone and do rahuka, kuka, buka. But you see, if I go and sleep by night, I will wake up 6. I'm not the type that sleeps now and say, I wake up 2. Now lie. I've deceived myself. No matter how tired I am, I must still sleep my 12 one. Because if I sleep four, I will surely wake up seven. It's as if that morning sun knows how to wake me up. But if I sleep ten, I will wake up seven. So I know myself. I learned that early that the night was my way. Oh my God. You must know your way. Are you following? Yes, sir. You must know your way. Those days in you are, ah, you are getting to Maracana, you, you, you almost feel like, I'm a sinner. And when you're meeting, pray, you are just, I didn't know that those things were trainings. Ah, Mehila told me Akaba. That's how me and Demona met from praying at the back of town. They say, ah, I think I'll pray longer than this brother today. He now say, ah, he's going to his wife, he's looking at me and say, ah. <laughs> Power past power. Staying power past staying power. All of us can have it. Are you listening to me? Because you see, the matter about your growth is in your hand, not in the hand of God again. Because now it's a partnership. God wants to take you to any length, is if you want to follow. The word of God. Spending time. So I will read scriptures in the night. Because as medical students, you will have gone to school from like 8 to evening. Abi, you will hit, you will read. 
Because I try to read every day, no matter how small. Read. So when it's nine, hey, hey, I've satisfied my calling, I've read for the day. Then tongue. When I now tongue, I didn't know that that thing, that prayer opens you up to the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So by the time I'll come to my Bible, oh my God, I'll have gone. Just study one chapter for two hours. Few verses for hours. I didn't know. It was just usual disciplines I felt that we should have as a believer. Make up your mind. I will sit down with the scriptures. Are you listening? I will sit down with the scriptures. I will sit down. I, I need to round off. I will say one more thing and I will say one more thing and then we will pray. I will leave the rest for in the night. I will leave the rest for in the night. I will leave the rest for in the night. Because you see, when the word of God begins to take over your life, you are actually coming into the economy of your spirit man. Hello? That's what happens. As you are taking the word of God and getting your mind renewed, the spirit of God is having more hold on you. That's what Jesus meant. You see, when you read John 3, he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he's saying, the fact that you got born again, your senses became alive to the kingdom. That's a layer. That's the layer every born again person is. So you, can, you, cannot, you cannot talk like Jacob again that God was here and I did not know. You will say God is here. Hello? Because now your senses are alive. But you see, that's not all. The presence of senses is not the issue. Jesus went for that to say in 3 verse 5, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. Hello? What's the entering of the kingdom he meant there? Is Paul wrong that says that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, already by faith? But it's clear that as you begin to take the word to be born of water, that's what it means. To be born of water is to be born by the revelation of God's word. Are you listening to me? Because it's the spirit that reveals that word and washes you. He said, by the washing of the word. So that washing of the word renews your mind. And as you begin to get your mind renewed, you're actually entering the kingdom. What does it mean to enter the kingdom? It's to come under the economy of your spirit. Because the kingdom is nowhere else. But where? In your spirit. So that now your consciousness will breathe from your spirit. The revelation of God's word is in your spirit. Can I tell you, you are only conscious of what you have known. If you do not know God's word, it cannot become your consciousness. And your spirit, the only thing your spirit knows is the word of God. And the way it will become dominant in your life is to the degree you are taking that word into yourself. And we emphasize this so that you don't forget. This word is to cause me to be ruled by my spirit. So that when I think, I will think just as my spirit thinks, which is renewed in the image of him. Hallelujah. That word. So it says, be not, trans uh, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. So there's transformation taking place as you get washed by the word. I take the word of God serious in my life. Say it, I take the word of God serious in my life. Take the word of God serious. And the scripture makes us to know that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So if you are going to be able to possess your possession, you must be skillful in the word of righteousness. But how can you be skillful if you have not learned to use the word? How can you know how to use the word if you have not learned to sit down, read, and meditate on the word? Moses, with how great he was, he was going to give Joshua the secret of everything. He said, this book of the law. I thought he would say, Baba, my fast 40 days every day. The word. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall do what? Meditate therein. How? Day and night. 
And so shall you make your way what? Do you want to prosper in your soul? What should you pay attention to? Take the word. Read the word. Stop this Sunday habit. You see? You drop it on the shelf, pick it there again the next Sunday. Some of us don't even have jottings for Bible. Hello? No jotting. But you have three jotters for Ganong. Three jotters. Normal notes, possible essays. And for the book of all books, that does not need to be revised. The only book that way you read, the author stands with you. You cannot open a, a note. You know, when they told Moses to come up the mountain, I had to tell him, carry tablets. Because if I tell so far, you need to know how to write it down. Can I tell you, I learned that in 2010. That for me to be able to say I understand God, I must be able to jot down his thoughts. So I had a book for Bible study, not for sermon notes. To some of you, your sermon note is also your Bible study note. You are a joke. Hello? Sermon notes will be different from what? Your Bible study notes. Because in the new covenant, he wants to write his law in our hearts. And the way we we'll do that is how we learn to come daily and jot those things how that our eyes is seen and imbibing them, meditating on them. Meditation is that means by which you will begin to write it in our heart. Are you listening to me? <laughs> See, growing is being deliberate. You cannot be relaxed and expect that you will develop spiritually. No. It doesn't jump on you. You have to be deliberate. So you will take out time in the world, jot revelations that you'll be meditating on. I go back to my jottings. You get what I'm saying? And I'll look at things God has told me. Meditate on them. What I jotted in the morning, meditate on it during the day, evening. Because that way I'm writing it in my heart. <clears throat> so that it becomes part of me. So you must have a different Bible study note. From what? Your sermon note. Do you get that? I think I've emphasized this enough. And you see, the discipline of prayer is inevitable. Nobody is born with the gift of prayer. Jesus said, men ought always, so that means there's no gift. It's a discipline. You say, ah, you are a prayer court, sir. That's why you are praying this way. I'm not a prayer court. I'm welfare secretary. Welfare. My life is to welfare people. So prayer is not my thing. I just know how to cook the best meal and make you feel happy. As much as those things are nice, all of us are called to pray. Men ought always to do what? To pray. And to show you that prayer as a route in your growth, building up yourself in your word, most holy word, most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So that means a believer should be a regular tongue talker because there is something that habit is building up in you. Hello? One of the things I noticed about myself when I began to give myself to praying in tongues was my sensitivity. Sensitivity. What did I say? Sensitivity. Yes. As I began to give myself to praying in tongues, I realized I was very sensitive. Now, what was that sensitivity? To the things of the Spirit. And when I see something that wasn't in concert with the Word of God, there was a reaction. 
brother, there is something praying in tongues does to you. Actually, you are learning to drink. Because no man drinks with his ears. Hello? Do you open Coke and us? What do you take? You sip it with your mouth. So when you pray in tongues, you are drinking. Be being filled. He said, do not be filled with wine. Where in what? In excess. But what? Be being filled with the Spirit. One of the ways to be filled with the Spirit is to speak in tongues to yourself. Rabba, ba, 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 ba. You say, ah, but we're not in service. Hello? These tongues is anywhere you go. That's why it's the only gift amongst all the gifts of the Spirit that you can operate at will, your own will. Other ones is by desire. Hello? Ha! Ah, the blessedness of praying consistently in tongues. Oh, the blessedness. Don't be one weekend in one month that you pray. Hello? You say, ah, the message that born Sunday only. Ah, let me go and pray. You know that's what some people do. Either the message was hot or not. Kali Bahatokia. Embrace that life. Make it your home. Are you listening to me? A, a believer is not permitted to be a talkative, but when it comes to tongues, my God, you can talk and talk. And Lord, don't say, this thing I'm saying does not make sense. Ah! The Bible says that he that speaking in a known tongue, his understanding is unfruitful, but how be it in the spirit? What does he do? He speaks mysteries. Take prayer with you. You are about to enter a car. Who fell over motor after work? It's not every time you should be on your phone, Instagramming. This Instagram has taken time from us. You see, I pray one day you will check the number of hours you spend on your phone. You will see that you have time. You have time. But you are just going from work home. Quietly, you don't need to be loud. It's not in the loudness. You are just building. Krodozuzahashte. Brekanto soprantaba. Brakato no sozula kabati. Belekete bialabakota. Very quiet. But something's going on. Because you are building. Hello? You are building. No tongues is a waste. You, see, you know what I'm saying? Allah Almighty has danu. God has helped you not to sosot danu by speaking in tongues. Hello? Sha, 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 sha. You are going to go and fetch water. See, you are, let them call you names. You know where you are going. Are you listening to me? Solomon, see, I you. Now you kill Jesus. Ah, now me kill him. He wouldn't have died if not because of me. Hello? If you will be deep, you must go deep. <laughs> Stop all these things. We are talking about you want to manifest our sons. Ah, you must travel in tongues. Makaba kaba kaba kaba. Manga bala dabata. We will not speak in tongues if it is not going to profit us. When we go baptize the Holy Ghost, all of us should have been dancing in the spirit. But why does it have to be? Raka kaka. There's something about it. It's as though it is the tool to lead you to other things. And you see. Brother, don't worry that your tongue now sounds like a cartoon. Don't worry. You say, can, can. Ah, don't worry. <laughs> Stay using that, that with the way it is. Stay using it. It will grow. Not all of us started with capital letters. It was by repetition. Staying there with God. I listen to it. I say, ah, Lord, I don't like how my tongue sounds. No, keep on speaking it and it will keep on changing. The tongues I was speaking in 2010, not what I'm saying now. It has become stronger. I listen to it. And by seven years from now, it will not be the same. Maybe by then, if I say one thing, the whole building will fall in there. <laughs> ah! Kayabala Kuaraba. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you are. Then there must be a secret about it. Don't say, ha, ha, ha. I just need to spend little time. No. The more, the better. Are you listening to me? Make it a habit. Silence. I'm not saying it should become a nuisance. 
But you see, you can be a good one. Silently. They can I tell you, have a place you go to where you can be loud. When there is somebody, nobody can, do, can be a people and say, who is there? Because it's you and God. You don't mind whoever is looking at, around. Because when I tell you, your, your, your prayer will not always be quiet. There's nothing like quiet time. Eh? Is your prayer always quiet? You can start quietly, but at a point, something kicks on. Ha! <laughs> when that thing kicks on, you, it's as if there's a speaker inside. Many of you don't get. You start quietly, but you don't end quiet. Are you listening to me? Ah! Molekete yalaba. I remember those days when I used to pray with my mom. I'll be hiding that I speak in tongues. I, do, I know some of you are probably doing that too now. When you are praying, I will just be praying with you. Lord, Lord, and tongues is rumbling in your heart. Ha! Ah! Until a moment. Until a moment, it just bursts. Do you not say, ah, Ah, they don't know that since the beginning of the prayer, you'll be holding it back. Because God's plan is that you will pray with the Spirit and pray with understanding also. It's meant to start with the Spirit first. Because it's by the praying with the Spirit that understanding will begin to distill upon your heart. Or now you should now pray with understanding as regarding it. If Jesus prayed, you will pray. Yes, sir. There is no excuse. All of us, that same Jesus now lives in us by His Spirit. You can pray. Open your mouth and He will feel it. It's not a gift, it's a culture. It's a habit that every man imbibes. Ah, by the grace of God, my child will know tongues before he knows Yoruba. He will have heard it so much. I listen to you. will have heard it so much. Ah, ah. And you see, they know how to copy us. And as they copy, they will meet the real thing. Listen to me. Prayer must become the habit of your life if you will develop. Don't give yourself an excuse. All of us, our body is paining us, but we understand that if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, he will quicken our mortal bodies. And that's why Psalm 80 says, quicken us, O God, and we will do, we will call upon you. Prayer is something the Holy Ghost does through you. You might start by yourself, but he will come and help you. See, don't get tired of prayer. Some of you say, sir, I've been praying for long. I've never seen big things. I've never seen big returns. Stay there, stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Don't measure yourself by others. That one might be an evangelist, but you are a prophet. There's something deep that when your voice comes out, it will speak from a deep place. I say, ah, the evangelist is just going around and screaming. Touch people, you can't catch it. They are falling down. Say, me, I touch, nothing happens. Oh, yours will not be by hand catch, it will be by hot hands. So you need to come to a deep place where your word is like fire. Hot is a place in the spirit. And we journey there in prayer. Oh God, there are things that will meet you first in prayer before it begins to manifest them. Are you listening to me? I knew the day the teaching grace was released in 2013. It was in praying, studying God's word, and something opened. 2020, I was studying for 10 hours during lockdown. And I would pray in my room, and so then I was caught up. I saw myself in the room of New Testament expositors. And God said, as from this day, you will be able to exposit the New Testament. These things I'm saying, I was not taught it. Uh, it came by encounter. Can I tell you, prayer is a source of encounter. When a man learns how to do that thing regularly, spirits will begin to notice you because inconsistency lies the power. I'm not saying pray today and don't pray for a week. I mean do it every day. When it's convenient and not convenient, the instant in season and now of season. I mean you have katas, you do rakakakagaga. Don't say I'm sick. It's that tongues that make you recover quickly. Are you listening to me? Be a die adding prayer person. Hello? Check them. Check every giant in the kingdom. They prayed. Elijah was a man of like passion. And he prayed. Oh my God. How can we pray like this? Hello? It will not be our person. Prayer is a must. 
is a must. Make up your mind. Nothing will rob me from praying. You see all these ones? I can count the number of times I've been to cinema in my life. The first time I went there was my mother and mother took me. When she saw me, she said, you look like someone that does not go out. Come. And it's true, I don't go out. I like being indoors. I qua, twa, 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 twa. And watch YouTube clips that will stare me. You, you are watching Telemundo. Oh my God, you are wasting time. You say you don't feel like praying. You are a click away from being stared now in our generation. There is no excuse. You are a click away. There's intensive tongues online. You just click. You will hear in tongues. The feeling we enter. You have no excuse. So much invest, investment that God is bringing our way, but so little response and excuses. No, we forbid that in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you begin to give yourself to prayer, let me tell you this. If it is not consistent, it will not attract spirits. It's inconsistency that you begin to catch up everyone's attention. Because you see, when a man is consistent about something, his heart has taught something. Are you listening to me? And the father will know that you are not just here to collect something. Some of us, we pray when we know that we need something. Lord, my exam is coming. Jesus is coming. Help me, help me, Lord. Don't let me fail. They, they know your type in heaven. Yahoo, Yahoo. You are just here to gain, not to lose, and not gaining from you. Hello? If you are somebody that gives yourself, you may not have many friends, but you will have many spirits as friends. Are you listening to me? Uh, pray till your color changes. I'm not saying your physical one. There are what people will touch from say, ah, ah, this is not how we knew you before. Something has taken over. Is that Christ? Your prayer place is a private place that even your wife cannot come to. Are you listening to me? Make up your mind. If you don't have an altar now, you cannot have it in marriage. If you don't have an altar now, you cannot have it when you are a minister of God. No, it is now we build it and we keep it and we maintain it. May you not pray more while you are on campus than after campus. You say, ah, those days on campus, that's not your portion. We rebuke that in our midst. You say, ah, those days when I was a student, we pray long, but now, you know, the Lord is just helping us. My iPad is going on. Ah, my God. Be rugged. And I'm finding if you are not rugged on campus, it's going to be by mercy that after you'll be rugged. It's mercy. I know there are people like that after school, God help them, but it's very rare. This world, this world, say praying, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I am a lakota bayata. I listen to pray, pray till you cannot do but pray. Make up your mind. See, it, it is the way of sons. And I tell people, Jesus had a time of prayer and a had time of withdrawing to pray. So Jesus believed in praying daily, but he also believed in having long time of prayer. You know why? Because they that wait upon the Lord. See, they that wait upon the Lord then is like, Lord, I'm not here for a while. I'm here until I receive and that receiving can be two days. Oh, God. He said that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall do what? Renew their strength. That renew is actually change. They will morph. Ha! Huh? Thank God for praying long. When the Holy Ghost began to lead me to pray long, I thought I was getting crazy. We were doing 12 hours now, 2013. You are praying. Hey, we are praying 12 hours. Then he said, in 2017, 24 hours. Eh? You that you have not even now, you have, somebody is hearing this and I say, ah, me too, I'll pray 12 hours. But we've not even prayed one hour. Mwah. I want to teach you. You must imbibe the culture of prayer. Start from 30 minutes. The prescription of Jesus is that a believer should pray for one hour at least. He says, could you not watch with me for what? So actually, an average believer should pray for one hour every day. But the truth is, if you want to train yourself to pray, prayer is not what the flesh likes. 
one of the ways to improve your prayer life, one, stay around people that pray. See, don't deceive yourself. I don't like how that sister is. I don't like that. Uh, uh, you will remain a dwarf. Stay around the person till you can stand to. Are you listening to me? Stay around people that pray. When you see that they have meeting, go there, go there. Ah. Say, ah, you guys are praying, Abby. Go there. Struggle. You know when they are still speaking in tongues, you'll be adding small song. You know, because you, your tank, your fuel has finished. Just, just you stay there. You know, as you begin to go there repeatedly, you see that capacity will be building. Are you listening to me? Capacity will be building. Capacity will be building. You see, it's pride not to go and seek for help when you need it. See, you cannot be around a praying person and you will not catch the fire of prayer. And listen, you cannot be around a prayer and not catch the fire of prayer. Prayer is contagious. Hello? It's, it's contagious. As you stay around people that pray, you will pray. You will pray. You will pray. Two, discipline yourself. Because you see, prayer is something the Holy Spirit does to us. So if you keep on coming and you want to pray, so you set your alarm and say, I will not stop praying until my alarm rings. Start with 20 minutes. Is that what you want to start with? I will not live here until that alarm does what? So even when you've prayed, pray, ah, you know that 20 minutes will not look long. Eh? See, the flesh does not want it. So you will keep yourself there. Let I will not leave you until the alarm. What? So you see, your tongues will be heavy. It will be like his caterpillar. La loa, la loa, la loa, la loa, la loa. You, you will be, say, ah, say tw- 20 minutes, no, till you ah, but the alarm has not sounded. It's because, you see, this way, you have not been going that way before. So it can never start easy. Even when you receive an impartation and the, the, the strength carries you for some days, you say at a point, you need to carry that strength back yourself. Because the day may I go back then, the Holy Ghost, I spoke in tongues for five hours straight. Five hours. After eating beans. I just first of all pray. When the time I go back, I pray. They had to pray and say, God, calm your hand on this man. Let him be peace. Be still. All those things they used to tell us. And then I was coming and I said, ara, 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 ara. After I, I calmed down, and I called my friend in Kennedy Gate Library. I said, bro, I'm now baptized in the Holy Ghost. La bo 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 over the face. Say, come, let us eat beans so that we can go and pray. So we open pot of beans. And we, you know, in those days in school, beans was the food. You now all these spaghetti children. You know, they are just becoming spaghetti people now. I don't, beans, those days were happy. So as we ate that pot of beans, we just went back to chapel. And we did five hours. My God. Because the thing was fresh. Shaking us. Ra, qua, qua, qua. The next day, I was wondering if I can still pray. <laughs> Hello? Because now, the whole feeling has left. Let's say, can I even still speak in tongues? Imagine. A man I don't spend how many hours? Five hours. He's wondering now. My mind was not yet renewed. So my friend had to tell me, did you believe that this thing happened to you? I said, yes, I believe. Then open your mouth and you will feel it. And I went like one, to one corner. And as I opened my mouth, I started speaking in tongues. Hey! I was like, yes. Yeah. You know, because I've grown up in a church where they bastard. They say, I'm in You know, all those things are strongholds. Though. Big, big strongholds. They will say they are speaking in tongues. And they, don't, they can't tell us what they are saying. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I think I need to round off. So you see, that habit, you would develop, you would discipline your flesh. Your flesh would be like, no, no, nah, I'm not just going to watch small Paloma and Diego. I don't know the one guys are watching now. Hey, no. 
have a time of prayer. Make up your mind. Stay there. Stay there. Your flesh will want to go. And you see, those of you that have tried praying for long, you find out that when you first start, ah, your mind will be going to east. Say, ah, that my boyfriend I left in my hometown. I hope he's well, he's well. And you will not see me for three months now because I'm in school. Your mind is a strange entity. You will be going left and right. But many of you don't know that. Prayer actually starts when that mind is gathered together. And it can take you 30 minutes. I'll talk about those things in the night. But see, I'm just trying to draw it into you now. A bit of prayer is a must. Is a must. If me and you are going to desire to become who God wants us to be. You see, as you begin to take prayer in one hand, the word in the other hand, and the first thing too in another, and you do this consistently, your day will break. Because Jesus says, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, he will live by me, even as I lived out by the Father. You know what that means? I need to show you that inside the Bible. Don't mind, why in the seminary, you know, so they have those bells that ring. I need to round off so that we can have a break before the next session. John chapter 6 from verse 56. It says, He that does what? Eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwelleth in me and I out in him. As the Father has sent me and I live out. What does it mean to live by the Father? Is that Jesus is saying, my life, I live it by the energies of the Spirit. Because the Father that dwells in him was the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He says, my life right now, I live it by the Spirit. It's actually the Spirit's life that I'm living in my flesh. No wonder it was supernatural. No wonder I could walk on water. Hello? No wonder his life was supernatural. He said, the life I live. He said, as the Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So it's actually the Father living through him. Are you following it's the Father living through him. So the more we yield to the dictates of the flesh, and I'll, sorry, dictates of the spirit rather, and the spirit gains ground, the spirit will become the, denom- the dominating force of our life that will now live by the spirit. Hello? You see, and there is no duration attached. You say, ah, if you do this thing for 10 years, mm-mm. it's until your day breaks. Until you enter there and you know that right now, it is now him living through me. Not that you are trying to, play, to show us, but you know it experientially. It says, as the Father sent me and I live by the Father. He said, so he that does what? Eats me. Did you read that? So he that eats me, even he, what will he do? Shall live by me. So it will be Christ living through us, really. He, you didn't get this. Oh. You are eating his flesh. That's you are eating of Christ. Eating of Christ. He said it will get to a point. There will be the one living through you. Hallelujah. So you will become word made flesh. Christ made flesh. You will be walking through you. And can I tell you, he wants this. Don't think that this is not for you. He wants this in your life. Stay with the word. Stay with prayers. Stay in fastings. Make it a habit and a culture till Christ will be seen through you. Hallelujah. You see, it is when Christ is seen through you that the next expectation 
It's not you they are waiting for. It's Christ. The deposit of Christ that is in you. To be what? To be outraged. To come out of your life. That's what they are looking forward to see. And you see, when that Christ begins to emerge, it will emerge with his colors. It will emerge with his strength. And they will find that there are some things that you have found in him that is, can be found in you. You know what they said of Daniel? He said, in him was light and understanding found. Like the wisdom of the gods. Hello? The things of God will be found in you. Once you have made your journey like that, it will not be something you are forcing. It will be something that you live. Glory to God. So as I do this, it will be manifesting through me. Because now the life I am living now in the flesh, I am living by him. is a reality. Galatians 2.20 is a reality. That the life I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's actually his faith, not my faith. God has descended into me and is now living out through me. And can I tell you, it's simple dedication to the world, dedication to prayer, dedication to fasting is the secret of all these things. So the instructions that come to you in your place of study of God's word, you will make up your mind, the Bible will be what I live. So when somebody is telling you, what do you want us to do about this? Okay, let's do this because the scripture says so. Hallelujah. That's a man that is ready to live in this world by Christ. Glory to God. Are you following me? Dedication. Every giant you see in this kingdom, this is how they grew. Dedication to the world, dedication to prayer, and what? A life that was given to fasting. When they had to fast, they fasted. Are you listening to me? They had that regular culture. You read yeah, about people like Smigitu's work. They don't read newspaper in their house. Lester Somra was coming to visit Wigus was, and he was bringing newspaper. As he stood by the door, Wigus was saw him. He said, no, don't bring that devil's book into my house. See his consecration. Lester is also a minister of God, though. But he didn't say anything wrong in the newspaper. But somebody else, to him, it was what? And he said concerning Wigus Worth, you know who Wigus Worth is? I hope you guys know Wigus Worth. I'm not... <laughs> hey. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> now listen. So Wigus Worth. He said in their conversation, they are just with somebody. You, come, you came to visit him. And he says, sorry. And what he does, he, do? he goes to go and kneel down to pray. Imagine, he's talking, but he cannot miss his time of prayer because of you. They said he prayed maybe every 30 minutes or every one, one hour. It was 30 minutes. Imagine. So if you have talked with him for 30 minutes, you're like, can you just pause it? See dedication. Won't you be feeling like, ah, won't, won't, won't she feel bad? Won't he feel bad? Hello, if you are ready for this thing, you will go all out for it. And listen to me. You imagine, and, and look at what that thing was doing to Lester's heart. Don't want to see this man. Imagine. So Lester will have to chill in the conversation and wait for him to be done praying, to come back to continue. And he knew in his heart because he was going to leave England at that time. And that was his last chance to meet with Guzman. He said, at the end of the conversation, you do school, just say, can you kneel? Ha! Ah, why won't I kneel? <laughs> and he said he prayed with tears over him. Ha! Ah! And that was how he received something from that man. Culture of brain. Culture of brain. Culture of brain. Culture of brain. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. I will not be lazy about it. I will be intentional about it. Culture of studying God's word. I will not be lazy about it. You see, when you begin to do these things, eh, Satan will now orchestrate something called trials. There's a many of you, when you became spiritual, as if your problem increased. Eh? Okay, it didn't happen to you. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I want to explain that mystery now to you. 
You see, you cannot grow without war. Are you listening to me? You cannot grow without war. Without war. You need to be trained for it. Because as sons, we are called to possess the gates of the enemies. Those are the later things we'll talk about. But I'm letting you understand that, you see, the, the first place where you'll be fighting wars is, first of all, in your personal life. So, you see, when you begin to become serious, you know, find out that ah, my family members don't like me again. Your own is too much. Anytime you are coming home, they say, oh, to today, any small thing, sister of the Lord, sister of the Lord, is it only you? We got born again before you. I know, ma, but me, I want to advance. Don't talk that way. But I notice that once you begin to get serious with God, there will begin to be challenges. Now, I want to let you know that trials that you begin to face is actually coming on account of the world you've been encountering. Jesus told us in Matthew 13, he says, the seed that was sown and the sun rose and scorched it was actually trials and persecution in view of the word. So all those trials you are facing actually to test if truly the word of God is in you. And now you overcome those things is by standing by the word. Staying and affirming the word of God in prayer, in meditation, in speaking those things. Are you listening to me? For so far, um, I know that those are some of you's stories that some of us have even had conversation. Iliawa gonomwe, you are wondering, did I offend by following Jesus? Because Satan is trying to stop your progress. He likes people get, he doesn't like people getting born again, but if they get born again, he likes pursing them. Just pause them. Let them just get born again and be paused. They must not develop. But when you begin to make up your mind, I want to go beyond. I want to go further. You'll be like, ah. Before, all of you watch Super Story together. Are you listening to me? You will watch MTV Music Awards together. All the performers, you guys will be dissing about it. Ah, can't you see how she was doing? Hey, hey, but you now. Aduakeo. Melash Aduakeo. Then I'll be like, are you okay? <laughs> Today is not Sunday now. Nah. Every day is the day of the Lord now for me. Hello. For some of you, you want to start compromising and say, I don't want trouble, I don't want trouble. The, you should understand that it's Satan that is trying to bait you. He wants you not to make progress. So he begins to make things tough for you. Is that season, eh, when you are trying to become serious with God, all those boyfriends you have abandoned, and all those girls that used to like you, they will now be coming back at me and saying, Hi, sweetie. And you now be like, Something will be shaking your heart because you remember yourself that this is your way. But now you are saying, I choose your will. I choose your will. I choose your will. Holy God. That's when you will find out that, ah, you are now going online and there's breast everywhere. You know why? Satan will say, hey, we know we still have something together because he knows how you sit with him watching those illicit things. At that moment, God is watching you and seeing if your times of secret place with him, you've learned how to say no to unrighteousness. Are you getting me? How to be courageous. How to stand by the word. So as he said, sweetie, a part of you wants to send smiley back. You know that smiling smiley? Ha! Ah. And the Holy Ghost said, just say good evening. When you say good, you know that that's not the usual response. It's a way to break free. Can I tell you, you can't make progress if you don't break free from these former things. Some of us want to do Christ and do other things. It's not possible. It's not. So trials will begin to come. You see, God's plan is not to use trials to train you how to pray. I don't believe in that kind of teaching. Ah, I learned how to pray because suffer so suffered so me. No. Pr your motivation for prayer should actually have come for your love for God. Because when that trial finishes, what will now happen? You'll be praying with song now because God has done something. 
and you know that prayer ought to be a culture, a habit. That's why people that started praying because there was a problem, they don't continue when there is no problem. Because what made them to pray in the first place has been dealt with. Are you following me? Trials. They will come. There will be things that will begin to take place. So you find out that hey, they will tell you your curriculum now is tougher. Nobody should pray somewhere again. All those things I say is Satan that is doing them. I will stop at this point. As you begin to give yourself to that discipline of prayer, Paul now says that we know this, that our present what? Sufferings. That present suffering is actually the constraint that these disciplines bring to us. I could count, bro, I didn't attend any you missed dinner when I was on campus. I'm not saying you that you are better you are actually dead. I'm telling you how me I went all out. I know that the time I was spending you sat dinner with like five hours, Abby. Let me tongue my soul away. And I just pray, pray, study God's word, spend time with him. Hallelujah. I can never forget our final year. No people say, I never attend all this year. This final year, well, that's what I did. The man they don't say, well. Let's just go and do 12 hours. And me and Demona just went. Morning till night. We, when we came back, we spoke in tongues to entire beach. We were so full. While they were dancing to David, us we were full of God. Ah! Hello, may you have a friend that will push you. Amen. All these friends are the friend you have. Is how Ashake is doing concerts, you know. Ah! Those kind of friends must live your life. Trials. As you keep yourself, constraining yourself. Don't worry. You say, bro, you've been praying like this for one year. We never see anything. Don't worry. Keep at it. Out of the ashes of my dying today. <laughs> hey, I see the breaking of a brand new day. In which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. Hey, I see the breaking of a brand new day. My brother, you might think this thing is too simple to be true. But can I tell you, this is the simple thing to the way to manifestation. Staying and imbibing this culture and this habit of the word, of prayer, of thanksgiving, of fasting. This is the way. Obeying every instruction he gives you. This is the way. This is the way we will conquer territories. By keeping to this. Out of the ashes of my day, I see the break of a brand new day. Oh, in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. Hey, I see the breaking of a brand new day. Out of the ashes To be revealed through you. 
Oh, that we embrace this. Can we sing that song? Out of the ashes of the dawn. So when he's summoning you and say, go fast for three days and break by six every day. And you feel tired at times, you understand that there's something coming forth. When they tell you, sister, you're no longer as fresh as before. Don't worry. There's something that has been worked. Out of the ashes, I'm a dying today. Hey, I, I see, see the breaking, breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Can we tell God that you will commit yourself to this habit? This habit for dominion. This habit for transformation. This habit for change. That you will give yourself to prayer. The ministry of the word. That God might birth a new man in you. One that is renewed in the image of the one that made him glorify. I see the breaking of the brand new day. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes of my dying today. I see the breaking. I see the breaking. Of a brand new day in which the name in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the, the breaking of a brand new day out of the ashes, out of the ashes. God is doing something. These habits are habits of righteousness. That the Son Himself might be cultivated in you. That your true self in Christ Jesus may come forth. Oh Lord. Lord that you will keep us at these things just as you kept the apostles they said it is no reason for us to leave the word of God and serve tables they said we will give ourselves continually to prayer fasting and to the ministry of the word of God Father we trust you as we journey into transformation into becoming sons that will be manifested on the earth that will be put in charge of territories and places. Help us to imbibe these disciplines. So that we can actually take charge of our own body. And our body will not rule over us by the dictates of the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name of prayer. Hallelujah. So we're going to go on a break again. I'm going to hand over to Brock Lady. So we'll go on a short break again. And we're going to come back. It's going to
to be for 45 minutes. Rest, stretch your leg. It's not for long. You're not yet to sleep. Yes. And when we come back, we are entering into something. And I've kept some parts of what I felt God will have us until this evening part. And we're going to just push, but don't worry, the Holy Ghost will bear you up. Hallelujah. So just take that 45 minutes as an opportunity to rest, not an opportunity to gist. Are you listening to me? Think about this. Uh, what are the practical plans you want to begin to study God's word? Go and commune with your soul. There is a way to be transformed. It's not by being talkative. Is by coming to sit at his feet. Hallelujah. Ask yourself within that space, how will I begin to take charge of my life now so that I can be helped? I know that God will help you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, if you are going to UCH, UI side tomorrow, can I just see your hand? So, um, we want to organize a bus like we did, but this time around, it's going to be subsidized. It's not going to be fully um, catered for. So, normally, when we go home, I mean, we'll take the normal public transport home, but we want to bring a bus that will just take everybody all at once. So, I just want to know your number. Just see me. So, a fee of 500 Naira, then the remaining one, we are going to sort it. So, I would just want to take your names down. And if you are coming for the first time, Please just wait so that we take your numbers and that's all. The meeting is ended. God bless you. Please, we'll resume back by 7.10. 7.10, please. Let's be here by 7.10.